So I just found out four to five days ago um, from one of my subscribers that John Anthony from MasculineDevelopment.com has actually committed suicide. And um, if you don't know who John Anthony is, he's basically the god slash king of self-improvement. This guy was getting laid left and right. He'd already worked through everything. He was getting laid left and right. He had a really good physique, a really good aesthetic physique, better than 99% of the human population. And uh, he was making over $100,000 per month in passive income from his blog. So he was making more than a mil per year. Under the age of 30, he wasn't a depressed human being. Uh, I'll get into depression and depressed and so on and so forth. I feel like he was depressed at this point, but not that he had any mental health issues or he or he had depression or something. And uh, this man who basically came, he came, he saw, he conquered, did everything, um, ended up taking his own life under the age of 30. And I honestly genuinely feel like I am one of the only human beings, one of the only men on planet Earth because this is a man problem one of the only human beings on planet earth that has an idea of why he did it. And I feel like my idea of why he did it is quite accurate, but of course I'm still just guessing because nobody knows why he did it. And uh, I'm going to explain to you the entire thing of why and how he did it. I'm going to explain to you your entire journey of self-improvement. Wow. I didn't expect that to happen, but okay. Um, but this is your journey in self-improvement. I want to take you through every single one of these sub trees and branches and what they mean and what it was that he was missing in order that he, that had he found this thing, he would have been able to fill that void in his life that I know that he definitely felt that void in his life. So that's what this video is all about. And, uh, it'll also get into what's the reason why I have stopped making YouTube videos and Instagram and taking up coaching clients and so on and so forth as well. So I think this is for any of you guys that are into self-improvement, this is going to be a really enlightening, eye-opening video for you guys. And I think you're really going to enjoy this. Let's get right into it. All right. So. Um, I've thought about this and I've been thinking about this quite a bit, like, like quite a bit from the second I found out whatever, four or five days ago or something, I literally just cannot get it out of my head as to why could this guy who's at the top of the world has anything and everything that everybody's always trying to strive for. Why would this guy do that to himself? It makes no sense. I, at first I was thinking, is it like a, is it like a crazy uh, financial deal or something that he did? Did he like put all of his money into one basket and that basket ended up dropping like Bitcoin or some shit? But then I was also like, uh, one, no, because no person that knows how to make money would put all of their money into one thing. That would be, that would be impossible. Number one, number two, no person that knows how to make money really. I mean, they, they, they suffer that pain and regret in the, short term if they gamble it away or something stupid happens they lose their business or something but they always have that thing in the back of their mind okay no you know what i'm very sad very sad very sad depressed but i know how to make money if if i can do it once i can do it again and that's the kind of guy that he was so it wasn't that it wasn't that um i was just thinking i was so the only other uh, the third thing that i was thinking was did he get into trouble with something uh, in the sense, you know, like, you know, like some fucking stupid disease or this, that, or something like, okay, in the next, you know, you only have six more months to live, three more months to live or something, or, uh, uh, uh you know, you're going to start losing function of your brain and you're going to start losing function of your limbs and become a vegetable for the rest of your life or something. Cause I can see myself trying to end my, I, I don't want to live as a vegetable. So I can see myself trying to, you know, do that. Like I would much rather end it now, uh, at the top, as opposed to like having to go through that shit or something. Could it be that? And um, on Mother's Day, which is like three or four days ago, I actually discussed this entire thing with my mom. I was like, mom, this guy who was the fucking, you know, had everything in the world or something at the age of 30 years old, he ended up killing himself. And it shocked her too. And she she said, or she thought, uh, oh, you know what? It could have been because of a girl. 
and i was just like um i get it like why she thinks that because you know 98% of the world is like weak weak minded people like that like once they get heartbreak they just want to like throw everything including their life away as if that's like a big statement or something or they just lose everything in the sense that you know there's really nothing else for me to live for which is really pathetic but so she also she also i think she also kind of thinks that men are just kind of stupid like that like they're just dumb like that they can never they they've never grown over that thing because you know all the movies and tv shows and shit especially in bollywood show you that and i was like no man that, that that's not what this guy was like cuz he's into dating and all that kind of stuff and 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 like everybody knows that like every responsible grown man that he, that has done pick up or at least understands it even or you know understands the dating phase or something is like okay i have a solid girlfriend this is amazing my life is really good we're working hard in the relationship blah 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 if something were to happen god forbid whatever we grow out of each other something happens whatever might happen and we have to let go you know what it's really sad and i'll probably cry for like a month or 3 months or something i'll be sad and depressed or something but that's fine i'll get back on my feet in 3 to 6 months i'll start going out and talking to other girls and i know myself like i'll have grown so much more in by then then the next girl that i get in 2 to 3 to whatever years whatever it is after will be way better than the one that i had before and um <clears throat> this is something that i've noticed in my own life every girl that i've dated has been better than the last every relationship that i've had has been better than the last and it's not because magically the girl is getting better or better it's because i am getting better at what do i want in a in a relationship what my boundaries are standing hold and true from my boundaries filtering out nonsensical girls and drama and all that kind of shit so it, like i am the one that's in control that's m- navigating the ship in in terms of where it wants to go so it's like no that's impo- that's impossible like that would he he can't do that that's not possible so then she didn't have an answer for it either and um again this whole mind map that i came up with is going to explain the end or or what the void that i think he had was So let's just start off with your journey in self improvement, right? Anybody's journey in self improvement, yours, mine, John's, everybody's journey in self improvement. We all start off irresponsible, powerless or thinking that we're powerless, uh weak both physically and mentally, always wishing to have what others have and thinking that life is unfair because I don't have it and I I can't apparently I can't get it and da 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 da. we always have this black pilled outlook on life and we hate it right all right so this is my final day of editing this video and i wanted to bring this part in because it just randomly was listening to this podcast and it goes into the exact point about how we start off everybody starts off in self improvement everybody huh. transfer again yeah and it was just i had a piss poor attitude in my 20s i it thought like, i was better than everybody yeah a lot of my lack of success too when i was younger was just like blaming external factors that yeah. had nothing to do with the actual outcome yeah so like what just like oh well, there's like there's no parties there's no like uh-huh. girls to talk to and it's like there's like a fucking hundred around me but it's just like i don't talk to them yeah or it's like oh there's nothing going on this is boring yeah one of the things was like you go to a party be like oh fuck this man i don't know anyone yeah. here and then you go to a party where you know everyone it's yeah. like oh, i i only know all these fucking people <laughs> yeah and we go it's home like, and get on the internet yeah there's like no pleasing you at that at that stage i was yeah. always looking for like justification for why i'm not doing well kind of thing yeah but yeah it was funny too cuz when i was 18 yeah i mean for for you guys maybe a lot of the guys that watch my stuff you it's probably going to be oh i'm brown and like a western country oh i'm now it is it's all about oh i'm 57 58 56 55 uh oh should i have brown genetics and bodybuilding or some shit oh there are sessions going on i can't make money blah 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 Um what else Let's see 48 Yeah but I think at the time I actually believed these excuses like I really did Oh I definitely did Okay I just I just I just, I don't know I like embedded it in my brain somehow and I just would not blame myself and yeah. it's like if anything isn't happening it's like your own fault pretty much Yeah most of the time and for me it definitely was cuz once <laughs> I still remember I saw your video i was probably at like one of the 
I wouldn't say I was like depressed, but it was just yeah. like you almost get to a point where you just like feel okay with nothing going on and you just somehow justify to yourself that this is how life's gonna be. And then I saw your video. You're just content. Yeah, I was just like content yeah. with like lifting and yeah. juicing. And, and tech and different shit going. Like you can <sighs> you can entertain yourself enough to like not do anything ever. Yeah. And then uh you know, I joined the GLL forum and I started approaching and whatnot and everything mm -hmm. turned around in like a year. Actually, in like literally the first month, I did more than I had done in my entire 20 years prior. Yeah. And it was like... It's shocking how much when you stop trying to make excuses and just start looking into actions and solutions and shit. It's shocking how, how fast your life can change. Wow, it doesn't fucking matter where I am. It just matters if I'm making something of it or not. Right. You know? Like, I didn't club very much or like... And uh, <clears throat> when I started off self-improvement at, uh, at the age of 18 years old or something, 18, 19 or something like that, because I started off weightlifting, which is my first uh, step, uh, bodybuilding, fitness, whatever you might want to call it, body transformation, whatever it would be, was my first step into self-improvement. And which should be everybody's first step into self-improvement. But that's a different video. I, I think I made that in the shredded chat in self video thing. When I started off at the year 2007, the age of being black belt, the ages generally, age range of being black belt was 15 to 21. Um, I, I, I might even like extend it to maybe let's say 24, 25 or something, something like that in 2007. In today's day and age in 20 and 24, I feel like the black belt ages are even 15 to 30 or something. Um, and I think, again, social media has a lot to do with it, but also the fact that now anybody that has issues or is complaining about their issues or thinks that they have issues can go online and find other sad sap complaining circles where they will just they will gravitate towards because i have this i am a brown man in the west that uh feels ostracized or something and girls don't find me attractive or whatever it might be so I'll look for things like that does anybody else notice that brown guys in the west have it way harder than black men or white men or blah 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 and guess what? The first thread or something that's going to open up is going to be the South Asian Masculinity Forum. Ironically, uh, where these all these complaining motherfuckers go and con congregate right there, which wasn't a thing back then. We didn't have all these subgroups and subgroups and subgroups and subgroups and subgroups. Like, frankly, incels by definition existed, of course, even back then, but there was no incel culture back then. Now, incel is just like a, it's a, it's a fucking culture of, I don't know, it's just a thing. Um... Uh, anyways, <clears throat> the whole point of when you start off in self-improvement is that you're stuck in your head as opposed to taking action. This is when you're reading different research and reading different books and uh, you're supposed to be reading the rational mail to learn and get better or something. But all you end up doing is just taking the red pill ideologies and toxicities out of the ideologies and starting to hate women. Um, you, you're learning uh, like pickup or something requires you to go out and start talking to girls and you and you're like and it's a numbers game and stuff and you're like oh no it doesn't matter because you know black guys talk to three girls and they get a date and uh, I have to talk to 15 or 20 girls and get a date and you're stuck in those numbers in your head all that shit's just in your head like all those things those limitations those barriers or something that, that are stopping you are just in your head because if you do want a thousand girls uh, that guy has to talk to 1500 uh, not even, uh, uh, that guy has to talk to 10,000 girls. You might have to talk to 30,000 girls. What difference does it make? If you want a thousand girls, you need to speak and do the work that you need to do. If this, none of these statistics and all this kind of shit even existed, you would never have all these more of these limitations in your head or something. You would just have the fear of the action itself. You wouldn't compare the fear of the action to, oh, his fear of action or something is less, or my outcome is going to be less compared to him. You know, th there wouldn't be any of that kind of shit. So, this whole black pill ism thing, bullshit thing exists far more in today's day and age. Now, the good thing is right now, there's a lot more people that are out there to try and help you out. Uh, this is the age of the, uh, what's that? The Andrew Tate uh, wannabe something mimicking kind of something. And I'm sure a lot of people think that I am too, um, where it's like, you're trying to help guys with their self-improvement and help to improve their life. But sadly, it's it ends up being like a toxic culture or something. But here are the three to four things that all guys are being told 
about being a high value male, being this true alpha male, being this true Chad or some shit like that. These are the three or four things that you need. You need the body. If you don't have a good body or something, then you're nothing and she's going to go and cheat with you with a guy that has a six pack and so on and so forth, blah, blah, blah. You need the girls. Apparently, any true alpha male chat or something has to have like a harem of like three, four, five, ten, fifteen blonde girls and bimbos and big tits and whatever, uh, whatever kind of fucking girls or some shit. Like you need to have these high value women or something and like a harem of them. You can't just have one or one or something. You need infinite amounts of resources, infinite amounts of money. You need so much money. Like you can't just be. It's not that, okay, previously you were making 1500 bucks per month and now you're making 2500 bucks per month. That's not enough. You have to make 10 plus, 10 to even start off as being considered even like remotely respectable. You have to be at 50K or something per month or whatever it might be or something to be considered good enough for other people to like your goals or like your people to listen to you or some shit. You shouldn't even enter into the dating market uh, before you have uh, seven and a half grand, 10 grand per month or something income or some shit like that. All these different random numbers that are being thrown out there. Um, and then the fourth one um, is the whole, uh, the cloud thing. Just work, work on cloud, just get more followers, get more YouTube subscribers, get more Instagram followers, get more TikTok followers. Just the more cloud that you have, the more status you have, the more status you have, the more fame you have. It's kind of like almost ironically mirror to money like if you have a lot of money everybody wants to listen to what you have to say if you have a lot of cloud everybody wants to listen to what you have to say i'm going to get into the details of all of those things <clears throat> um video games are something for me i'll actually maybe i might even start off with it for me just because it's, it's like a, my own thing i mean i don't even have anything on there actually um but the reason i bought video games out there is because a lot of people like including myself even when i first started off video games are also kind of considered a form of self-improvement like you want to improve upon those video games because like most guys that are in this black pill phase are trying to drown their themselves and their sorrows in video games by distraction and shit but while you're doing that there's still self-improvement in general that you're kind of chasing which is like how do i improve my kd how do i improve this thing how do i get faster at this thing how do i become better at evasion or blah 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 whatever else it might be and uh, give me one second. I just want to make sure that all the recording and everything is going good. Yeah, because <clears throat> I haven't made a video in a while. So I don't know if I might screw up somewhere. Um, Yeah, so video games, right? So then then there's this thing about this. My my purpose, my purpose. And we'll come back to my purpose after. And this is, in my opinion, the missing key that nobody really speaks about. But let's get back here, right? So. Uh, video games, uh, I'm just going to mention it. Video games can very much be a part of your self-improvement. If you just don't want to waste infinite amounts of time in video games, don't play multiplayer video games. Multiplayer video games require every single minute that you invest compared to that guy, you're going to be better than that guy. So it kind of hooks you into the whole thing about investing every single minute that you have. You enjoy video games. You enjoy the art. I enjoy the chess work off it, interactivity off it, all that kind of stuff. Just enjoy the art. It's like it's instead of a movie or a Netflix show that's like an hour or 10 hours or something series, it's like an 80 hour series or something. But nobody has a gun to your head. You don't have to finish it on time. You can just take your time, just chill out and actually have fun. So it's just something that I like on my end. That's like a different thing, right? Um, so let's just get into the whole the thing that everybody keeps promising that these are the things that you need to get, and you you accomplish these thing these things and you get to the top of the mountain. And that's it. Your your life is utter and pure bliss. I gotta microwave this thing once again. <clears throat> gotta heat this up again. Okay, so the body thing. So let's just start off. Why does everybody consider, uh, uh, everybody want to get a physique? Like, why do you maybe have ideas of why you want to have like a dream physique? And why does everybody else consider that you should get a dream physique? Why? Because you have a more comparative status. Like, even if I'm with my group of friends or something and I have a six pack and they don't, there's that, that little subconscious thing or something that everybody's looking at you, right? Like, this looks like that guy's in shape. Everybody else is not. There's like a little confidence ego boost that you get. And and even like, you know, good looking people, so to speak, get more attention than others, have their um, uh, things listened to and so on and so forth and stuff like that. Uh, that's just a, a very tiny little thing. More competitive advantage in dating. Clearly, if if I'm a version of myself that's at 20% body fat and I'm a version of myself at fucking 12% body fat, the guy that's at 12% is going to get more um, attraction and attention from the women compared to the guy that's 20% body fat. The last time that I was doing pickup, I was actually doing it during my bulk. Um, and you guys, I, I, I took you guys through the whole thing. I was drinking orange chicken shakes and I was moving around with orange juice and shit like that. 
and i did it entirely the opposite way of what you should be doing it when you when you're pushing hard on a pickup phase you should be pushing hard on a cutting phase because you can literally you work hard here you have lit- oh, so much time because you you're not eating that much food um you're getting your steps in when you're doing pickup and shit and the better and better and better you look the more you get attraction from women it becomes like this entire self rewarding cycle or something this thing helps feed into this thing this thing helps feed into this thing it just becomes like a very good synergy or something that you get into but obviously if i'm 20% body fat versus 12% body fat i will do way better at 12% body fat than at 20% body fat right despite the same intelligence the same every other thing that i bring to the table or something advantage is on social media cloud obviously the guy this i've seen this myself and everybody sees this too this is why there are so many guys that are dying of so many uh and and having so many um, health issues and stuff because they don't ever want to be not shredded because the second they lose the shreddedness they start losing followers tiktok viewers this that all that kind of stuff so you you have less external validation coming in from the outside world um you get greater respect from your peers obviously right you're working hard because looking good is a form of status in itself right this is something that you make i can't buy this shit like which is ironic because people come to me to buy this shit all the time people come to me for dnp consultations and shit and i'm talking about like 30 year old guys 30 year old uh, girls um uh 50 year old guys like i mean you would expect that these people have lived enough life to have some common sense and logic or something but everybody is coming with like okay no no i just want to take this pill and i want to sit on my ass uh, i'm doing cardio for 2 hours a day already but uh, i know that you made a video about this so i want to take this thing and and do 3 hours of cardio to get more results or something when the when the ideas are uh, the issue is entirely different the root cause the source the symptom of your problem is entirely different um this guy that i was speaking to um oh uh, you know i know i'm supposed to be eating a salad and uh, i have my salad sit- sitting in the fridge but like uh, you know like that pizza just tastes way better so he chose to eat the pizza as opposed to the salad and you're trying to get like you know number uh, uh results from dnp or something how do you get that from great respect from peers how do you get there i don't even remember but anyways like so uh, that will come really soon into why i'm talking about this stuff this gets you into the get big and l- get big or look good or die trying mentality and examples of the toxic hedonic treadmill here when when so, well, i'll actually get into that but yeah this is the guys uh, of the toxic hedonic treadmill here so examples of the toxic hedonic treadmill guys that can't walk because their legs are so goddamn big they're chafing everywhere like i have these guys in my gym and all the big gyms you can see them they're just like they're just pushing so much muscle eating so much food pushing so much muscle they they can't breathe properly they have bigger guts they're losing hair they have back knee uh they're having heart attacks um i just mentioned the dnp risk that was kind of the example of what i was talking about people are taking dnp just to get to like this look whatever look that they're trying to chase for or something um um there's this guy that i met yesterday or uh, whatever 2 3 days ago at this point and we were just having a random discussion and and uh, what was he saying he was talking to me about like you know i hit, you know what i i lift weights to look good man i don't lift weights to like you know be strong or some something like that um and i kind of like i'm not trying to make fun of him but it was like very 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 ironic because this guy clearly is on the kitchen sink this guy's lost his hair he's balding he's my age by the way he's lost his hair is balding um he has a huge fucking gut and that gut takes away even if he might be my size let's say even say he's my size that huge fucking gut takes away from all the other stuff that he's done to to build muscle or something and he does not look attractive in any way shape or form or something um and i'm like that ship is kind of sailed bro uh, you know that it's gone that 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 thing doesn't work i mean what you're trying to achieve that ship has kind of sailed and you did it to yourself like that's something that you did you're the one that took all these drugs and so on and so forth you're the one that 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 couldn't it just couldn't be enough for you and that's what I'm trying to explain about the whole toxic hedonic treadmill is like you just want more and you want more and you want more like anavar would have been more than enough to give you like a shredded look give you the pumps in the gym uh, give you this and this and all that kind of stuff like 10 10 to 20 mg of anavar would have been more than enough but you were the one that was to take 50 to 100 mg of anadrol plus you want to take 100 mg of tren plus you want to take fucking 4 to 6 ius of gh plus you want to take uh, so much insulin plus da, 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 da. like why like that much could have been more than enough on top of all the other things you're supposed to be doing but you just want more and you want it faster you want it more and you want it faster you want it more and you want it faster and you're suffering right now 
And there's no way to go back from that. That's the sad part about that stuff is there's no way to go back from that. Um, like there's bikini girls that are taking meth and cocaine to fucking look good and to lose weight and shit. Like bikini girls that are taking meth, cocaine, trend blown fucking to fucking look good. Bikini girls don't even have any muscle. They fucking barely have any muscle. Barely. Like what are you doing? How can you, how, how do you need this shit? Like that'll go into a separate rant all together in itself. But why? So now let me explain to you my rock bottom slash the my feeling of emptiness or something when and where i realized that uh, i'm actually kind of sort of chasing the toxic hedonic treadmill or i could be chasing the toxic hedonic treadmill so you know i have to be careful about it me get down to six percent body fat right these pictures up there you guys saw me get down to six percent body fat right these pictures up there it took me eight months to get down to six percent body fat i got the uh, physique that nobody else in the world can ever fucking get like my rectus spinner is red to shreds beyond any ivb bros imagination um i have better aesthetics than 99.9999 percent of the human population in existence so to use a better picture here but my editor happen this last 72 hours out of which the first 48 hours i was in bed because i was off of caffeine for the first time in four months right so for the first 48 hours in bed and that happens after 72 hours and that was done you guys saw me get down so, to six percent when i when i had that thing happen like when i lost uh i i kind of thought that reaching the top of that mountain would be like a million dollars that i would have in my bank and i could just keep keep seeing it all the time every time and i would be like fucking eternally happy when i reached that thing and i didn't i was happy that i reached the goal but it wasn't like this endless joy feeling of happiness or something that there was this like emptiness or that void and uh that emptiness or that void would not be filled with even more muscle or even more shreddedness or even bigger arms or something now i'm not saying i don't want these things i like these things because i like bodybuilding i like feeling good i like the pumps i like the growth i like the process of the whole lifting thing but there was no point and there is no point for me to take growth hormone and insulin and trenbolone and like i have never used i've used test mast uh, that, uh those two were even because i was working with greg test mast primo in his cycle echo boys d ball uh dynaball uh deca that's it that's, that's all i've used anavar uh rad 140 lgd 403 these are the five or three something compounds that i've ever used in my entire life that's it i'll clean once yes that's it so um and dnp like but that's different but i mean if you think of so you think like oh my god that's 10 yes but if you look at the whole kitchen sink there's probably like 50 different things people can use at this point i mean maybe two three years ago before people knew about this shit it's probably like 25 or something right so my point is i don't need to take more to feel good i knew that i didn't need to take more to feel good i knew that no more muscle was not the key to like eternal happiness or something so so why does accomplishing your goals give you like this further depression and i don't know if i should get here now or not um yeah so i'm not gonna i'm, gonna, I'm actually you know i'm gonna save that a little bit okay Ooh, then I'm back and i really needed that coffee <clears throat> okay i'm actually a little depleted and my carbs and stuff are getting low my calories are getting low uh, <clears throat> and i'm actually like seeing stars if i do like a lot of shit even though i'm not even that low body fat yet I'm, like probably like probably like 14 15 percent right now or something okay um now let's get into the next big one that until maybe two years ago nobody was talking about this three years ago nobody was talking about this and now because andrew tate has come about and all these other uh mirror warriors have come up now everybody's like girls you need more girls more girls more girls more girls right like lose only losers don't have girls everybody else has like a hundred fucking victoria's secret model sucking on their dick or some shit so why do you want more girls? Like, why would you want more girls? Even if I started off, why would I want more girls? Simple, to have more sex. Uh, everybody wants more sex, more money in this thing. Everybody wants it. Guys, girls, everybody wants it. And everybody wants to have more enjoyable sex. So more sex would be like a very simple answer to it. More sex would also be a very simple answer to all the black pill, incel, out all these guys that have defeated, have been defeated and are like, they want it really bad. But because they can't have it, they're like, fuck this shit, it's really bad. You know, all that kind of stuff. Those guys definitely, definitely want more sex. Because even one is better than zero, which would be a good start for them or something. So even, like, everybody wants more sex. More status. Um, having a hot chick, a hot blonde, a hot this, hot that, big tits, big ass, like, looks really good, blah, 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 gives this idea in this whole manosphere kind of something that 
then you're validated by women and you can actually get women or something. So it gives you more status in this entire thing. And just obviously like an attractive girl in general will add a little bit of status to your, to your life as well. Um, security of more options. This is really good for guys that are getting girls, but they're either not good enough or they don't know how to like model and have happy relationships. They always end up getting into toxic relationships. They don't, they don't know how to build a good relationship. Um, some of that kind of stuff. Like it gives you security of more options. If sorry, actually it's not for all the guys that are getting more girls that have one that are getting some girls, one, two, three girls or something. But but because they're always in such scarcity, they're always in so much fear. Oh, she's gonna leave me. Oh, she's gonna leave me. Oh, I'm not gonna do this because she might get angry and leave me. Oh, I'm not gonna tell her what I really feel. Uh, you know, I'm a fan of Andrew Tate or whatever. You know, like I I'm not a big um uh I'm an anti-feminist or whatever might be a thing or something like I hate the new age feminism bullshit that comes up um you know I'm not gonna say that because she might get pissed or something or something like that that's the thing is like when you know that you can walk out there and talk to another girl or something and get a girl not immediately but like at any point in time or something when you once you start putting in the effort you're not scared of being yourself ironically being your honest genuine self with your flaws and everything else makes her far more attracted to you and ends up with that much happier relationship so the security of more options social media is telling you that that's what i'm just telling you like everybody's just telling you you shouldn't have one girl you should have three girls you shouldn't have three girls you should have five girls um okay your girl right now is a four you should upgrade to an eight your girl this is this she has uh, a big ass but she has no big tits like you're blah 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 fucking go to the, it's stupid shit dumb fucking shit to, but social media is telling you that you're missing out because you're miss that because they want to tell you that you're missing out and there's FOMO. I put in FOMO, but I forgot why I put in FOMO. I, I don't know if that was for incels and stuff. I forgot why, why I put in FOMO. Man, I really don't remember why I put in FOMO. I think FOMO is possibly also like you always... I, I think everybody just wants to explore more girls or more sex or that aspect of it. You know, which only like the the uh, the alpha chads, you know, the, the chads memes... The, those guys that keep fucking all the girls in college or something, those are the only guys that get out of that thing because they're like, okay, if I ever want girls, I can get them. But most other guys on the planet don't have it. So they want to like go through that thing, I guess, that explore that thing once or something. <clears throat> okay. Um, oh yeah. So this whole thing about if you're a true alpha, all women will just submit to you. Uh, you know, you have to be this true alpha so women come and make coffee for you. Fucking bullshit like that, right? Examples of toxic hedonism and where it leads. Why does no PUA on planet Earth seem to have a happy, lasting, fulfilling relationship? Like, you know all the big guys that I've worked with, right? Of all the big guys that I've worked with. Um, I kid you fucking not. I am trying my hardest to figure out why does no pickup artist... Even the guys that have 400 lays, 600 lays, 750 lays and some shit. Why are none of them in happy relationships? Why can't they handle one girl and build something nice with her? Why are they never in... Why can't they never build anything with this girl? It's just never there. It's always the next girl, the next girl, the next girl. So that's cool for a little bit, but it can't be something forever. Like, again, that's a void that somebody's trying to like with just more pussy or some shit by diving into more pussy or some shit and it's never gonna happen so that was something that i kind of figured or, or realized was like why do these guys all know how to get girls but they don't know how to like build a happy relationship out of the whole thing um why is this guy that claims 1500 plus lay count or something married to a woman that cheated on him in the first three months apparently now I don't get into drama I don't know what the details are I, I really don't care but when him and playing with fire uh they were fighting i think his girlfriend or something brought the whole thing up at first he got married and then uh, his girlfriend like cheated on him in the first three months or something like what was the point what was the point of doing all this dating and, the, and this and this and this um oh yeah so and then you know going off like oh no she's a nine. Oh no she's a 9.5 look at this look at her tits look at her. like literally saying look at her tits look at her shape look at her ass this thing she's in this job or something um blah 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 she's a 9.5 or something and he's telling you and me that she's a 9.5 when she's cheating on you within the first three months. So my friend, she may or may not be a 9.5 to me or somebody else, but she's a zero to you, right? So what was the point of all of this stuff about 
about trying to get girls when you can't build something happy in your actual life in your actual day to day life um this uh, i forgot the name guy the name of this fucking nigerian bro but there's some nigerian dude that i i don't remember right now but he also made like a really douchebag video uh real he said um what do you say he said uh uh your girl wants to be with me why does your girl want to be with me because when she comes up with me i take her on like fancy dates in my personal private jet and we go to this fancy date and that fancy date and you know she has options to this thing and, uh, like everything is just more exciting and i was like bro good job you're a sugar daddy you're you're a retard like i mean that's not why girls should like you that's the first thing that my mom taught me like way before when i was growing up it was like please do not ever flex money to get girls you will never want that kind of girl and that girl will destroy your life because she doesn't actually want you she wants your money that was the first thing that my mom actually taught me in terms of dating or girls or something is like if you want some one you want them to like you for you not for what you have or what you bring to the table in terms of finances and and so on and so forth so this dude that bringing that thing up or something he has a lot of follow i forget how many followers he has or something and a lot of cloud or something the other brown guy that works with um alex from playing with fire if you watch his videos you have to watch his stuff you watch his old podcast you watch his videos or something you can tell that he 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 keeps claiming about getting more sex and obviously if that's someone's primary purpose or something i'm sure over a span of 3 to 5 years or something they're going to accumulate a lake under something but when you hear them speak about girls you can tell that there is no shred of respect for women there's no shred of value for the girls that he's getting and the things uh, or something like he's never creating anything it's always about getting like i'm going to take the sex i'm going to take it i'm going to take it this is how you take it you know some shit like that so what is the point of learning all these things to get these girls and having and claiming whatever kind of lake out when you cannot bring that into a real meaningful lasting relationship or life what was the point of that shit um this whatsapp group that uh, the toronto pickup whatsapp group uh, that i was a part of dude it's all it, it was all just negativity it was all there was only one guy who uh, i kind of jelled with or something that was it and uh, and this is the one of the only guys like you know came out with me for night game came out with me for day game because i needed a wing i just wanted somebody to wing with and um, who wasn't toxic about shit you know he wasn't toxic about women he wasn't angry he wasn't frustrated he was just doing it because he wanted to do it he wanted to have fun he wanted to learn um and everybody else just fucking toxic just if they're getting girls or if they're not getting girls just posting pictures of these girls or something in the group and not providing anything of value and the things that they're saying are just again i mean there's no other word for it like demeaning toxic you you tell you you can tell that they're not thinking about this other human being as a human being they're like oh this is some chick that i'm trying to like convince to have sex or get sex out of her or something you can see the text messages all of that kind of shit it was just pathetic it was like why are you learning this shit if all it makes you do or it brings you to is to like hate women what was the point of that shit did you start off trying to hate women no and we'll get into that in a little bit as well so okay so for me i'm actually going to give you the feeling of emptiness right you you guys know this video i actually um this was this video what the fuck oh yeah this one from cold approach to same day lay as an indian man this is i made this video like 10 months ago so i guess that's when it happened right how i mastered the art of dating <laughs> i should i shouldn't have said the month this is actually a this is, see this is very bad this is very bad because i didn't this wasn't a master the art of dating how i mastered the art of seduction would have been good or the master the art of, of pickup would have been good But anyways because that's not dating that's not what actual dating is but um so in that during that night uh, when me and this girl were getting into bed and you know she was giving me head and uh, I just I was looking at myself and uh, I was trying to like capture the moment and I kid you fucking not I kid you fucking not I had my dick inside this girl's mouth and I wasn't feeling anything. Like I wasn't and I don't mean like physically. I mean like 
emotionally or spiritually even i mean i wasn't feeling anything i wasn't feeling any happiness i wasn't feeling any any uh i don't know if the word would be conquest i wasn't feeling like a win not that i conquered the girl but like did i conquer some fear conquer some something i wasn't feeling anything uh anyway i had my dick inside this girl's mouth and i just felt entirely empty i know i didn't blow my load i just i just felt entirely empty and I, I, and the reason i i can remember this is but that was the day i stopped i that was the day i stopped pickup by the way uh, i didn't do a i mean i must have done a random approach here and there but i stopped going out and doing pickup after that day because i was like i did this fucking insane thing that i set out to do i did this insane thing that i set out to do right like as i used to be the guy that couldn't talk to girls and i was like so incredibly shy so incredibly nervous so incredibly whatever and you know randomly walked out there randomly spoke to girls on the street um um made her feel comfortable uh any kind of objection handling or something actually enjoyed the date actually let her feel comfortable and stuff um there was no like there was no toxicity there was no manipulation there was no nothing everything was absolutely genuine and she wanted to sleep with me obviously and uh, we did and i just kind of thought that this is the thing that's missing or this is the thing that i want this superpower this thing and the superpower of like pick up or something would be the thing that would validate in my head that you're a god like you're infinitely capable or something and in that video i put it in that it makes me feel like infinitely capable or something but then after i i remember when i did that thing i was like i don't feel anything like i don't feel anything i don't i don't feel anything i didn't feel any conquer i didn't feel anything and that's when i realized how empty this was like i'm really glad that i did all of this stuff i'm really glad that i learned all of this stuff i'm really glad that i went out and did so many approaches and i worked through so many fears that's the stuff that i'm proud of and the stuff that i'm glad about but i didn't i thought that thing that win that accomplishment that goal that muscle that this that whatever the thing would have been the thing that would have gotten me this insane happiness and built me up even more and it didn't and that was my rock bottom there uh uh and the feeling of emptiness there where i realized more of this is not going to get me to fulfill this void or whatever that thing this chase of happiness that i feel like i'm chasing or something uh you guys going to give me two more minutes cuz the most the most brilliant one the most brilliant one with the best examples ever is actually this one here the resources and money example so give me a second let me just Finance grab it or whatever I I don't even know what meme joke to make here but this is the thing that Andrew Tate has bought about the most and like all and all his like lackeys and clones and whatever you might want to call them chele fresh and fit and so on so what people just keep talking about resources resources money everybody wants money and money is going to solve every problem in your life whether it's getting girls whether it's getting security whether it's whatever you have an issue with off in life money is going to solve everything more everything why do you want more money because more everything you can get more girls you can get more dates you can get more clothes you can get more cars you can get more games you can get more drugs you can whatever you can get more 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 what so money will give you more 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 of everything money is the biggest status boost that exists there is no bigger status boost that exists than money um how do you know this everybody at this point in time that has money money if you have money everybody will just listen to you these are the two biggest value factors status factors in the world right now these are the two biggest ones clout and resources um uh hamza is a good example of it like he, when he started growing and he started growing with clout like youtube and you know all that kind of, he doesn't know anything about this he doesn't know anything about this his advice on both of these things are incredibly, incredibly stupid he started off with youtube the youtube clout and the fame and stuff and from here he started moving into money And once you started making making money and you could start bringing up that oh, I'm making this per month and that that much per month or this is my something now everything that he says is liquid gold or auditory gold or something um Alex Hormozy because he has his big fucking book that says 100 million dollar offers everything that this guy says every fucking piece of verbal diarrhea that comes out of this guy's mouth is liquid gold his advice on protein is gold his advice on training is gold his advice on dating is gold and the guy is an absolute moron like he's literally this is level 0 this he's level 1 that's it he's level this is level 0 he's level 1 but because he has money on top of also having a good physique and on top of uh having cloud which he's learning he's learning cloud now how do i know this i mentioned to you that i know his social media tiktok influencer guy who makes his shorts and everything so he's trying to play the game every single place but because this man just speaks because he has money everybody is in line to suck his dick 
my own fucking uh, business millionaire mindset guy he's in line to like oh my god Alex Ramos he's amazing my bodybuilder friends are talking about him everybody that I know is talking about Alex Ramos everybody nobody is sitting back and trying to like think for their own through their own this thing it's just that guy has 10 billion uh, dollars or whatever I don't know how much he has he has this much money and he has like a million subs or something I'm gonna listen to everything that he says um Okay, I, in fact, let me let me just invalidate uh, Alex Ramosi in a second, one, one single second, right? Because I know it happens uh, a little bit later on. The reason why Alex Ramosi has a $100 million offers is not because he's some amazing salesman. He, I'm telling you he's ground level zero. I know people that are better in sales than him. The reason why he has a $100 million offers is because he doesn't sell to you and I. He sells to big companies. If you sell to big companies that invest in a million dollars to $10 million, it's very easy to get to $100 million. If you sell to a, a, a B2C, like bus business to consumer like me, I don't have a million dollars lying around. It takes me fucking forever to make 10 grand. So it, you could have 10 uh, companies that you that want to invest with me for, for 10 million each boom you have 100 million dollars but you would have to take you would have to invest or have like 10,000 uh, individual customers that want to invest with me uh, to make like 10 million dollars or something and that guy that's making 10 million dollars is doing better and you want to learn from that guy more because he's making money from the individual consumer not from like big businesses but that's my individual rant on Alex Ramosi fuck that guy um it's the biggest status boost of all Money solves all problems. You don't have hair, boom, let's go. You don't have height, let's fucking break your legs, do the surgery. You don't have pickup, let's go to this fucking pickup artist boot camp. Apparently, he's going to teach you how to do it. You don't have muscles, let's get uh, a DMP to get, to get you shredded. Let's do an implant to get you bigger tits, a bigger fatter ass, uh, whatever. Money will solve all of your problems. That's the thing that everybody thinks in their heads. Money is going to solve all their problems. Um, I will never have a need for anything again. There's this big thing in... in in everyone's head is like i will never need for anything again i will just live in pure bliss if i have enough money cars girls luxury toys vacations blah 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 and you know at the end of it it's security okay google stop <clears throat> examples of toxic hedonism where i have seen money bite people in the ass and just fucking keep on going and keep on going and keep on going so now this picture right this is me at the business mastermind thingy Business mastermind whenever I went like in 2022 or something. These guys taught me how to make money and we'll get into whether I made money and how much money you made or something. This guy, this guy is the, the head owner of the business mastermind. This guy is his biggest success story client. This guy makes over a mil per month or something. This one's another bigger one who within the past two, three years started making like a bank of money. Um, This guy is supposed to, supposed to be this guy's right hand man. And uh, everybody is like worshipping him as if he's like some fucking, uh, some god, some amazing human being or something. This man is right now getting divorced or separated from his wife and his three kids. I made a video about this. My billionaire fitness mastermind guru is getting separated from his wife and three kids. This guy, um, I found out was lying to me about... Um, some other guy that was in the in the in the mastermind that was uh, that he said oh for the whole first year he was selling to guys and it didn't work and then he moved on for the second he was selling to girls and that started taking this thing and then now he's back to selling to guys so you will have to go through the blah 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 he told us a very big story right and I uh, went to that guy and asked him like bro for the first year you were selling to guys and it didn't work and the second this is it he's like no that's not true motherfucker lies to your fucking face in this most fancy fucking method of making stories and all kinds of shit. Um, there was some stuff that was off about this girl, but I don't know her. I don't want to get into it. Fuck it. Um, when I left the mastermind, I'll tell you why I left the mastermind. <clears throat> he reached out to me himself. Was like, hey man, there's another method or something, you know, like a sub program or so like he was underselling me. Like first he was like, oh, the renewal is going to cost you a grand per month, just like twelve grand. And then later on, he was trying to sell me for six grand or five grand. I was like, I don't want to be a part of this thing anymore. I mentioned this before too. Everybody at that place was fucking... I don't think I actually mentioned this maybe. But thinking over time... Not this guy. Th these are different guys. This is the guy that he was telling me about that was... Uh, oh, he first he started from here and then he, then he started with training with girls and then he started doing better and then he went back. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, I like this guy. This guy's pretty chill. Um, this guy's good in sales. This guy's Bedros Koulian. Uh I like this guy. Fake motherfucker. Forgot, forgot this guy's name. Fake dude. Fake fucking dude. I forgot his guy's name. Forgot his name. His, uh, this is his, uh, this is his, uh, uh, 
his therapist. Um, apparently, he was trying to help him with all kinds of shit in his life. Man's losing his wife. Um, she's charging five thousand dollars per session for for a single session. Um, this guy was my one-on-one -on -one coach. This guy is the guy that I put up in the video who said, um, "What will I get from?" working with you or coming onto your page. I'll have no benefit from coming onto your page. This is the picture that I took. I never posted it on my Instagram. I took this picture because I wanted to post it on my Instagram saying this is the guy that I'm working with for my business for, as a one-on-one -on -one coach or something. This guy would put me down repeatedly. He was like, uh, uh, don't put up pictures of your physique or something because, you know, other guys have a better physique. You know, the first guy that I show you the far on, on the far left, the big dude, he's like all these other, this guy, he's like, you know, people like this have the market and the crowd on physique and therefore nobody will want to look at your physique. So you're going to have to go like another angle. That's my own one-on-one -on -one mentor coach is saying that your physique isn't good enough. Don't go from that angle or something. Um, which is ironic because people want my physique. Nobody wants his physique. When I, uh, this guy was horrible at coaching, horrible at fucking coaching, horrible at empathy and shit. He's a legitimate psychopath. And uh, he was like, oh, when I finally started making a little bit of money, I think the first time I hit like four grand or something like that, when you know, I was putting in the work and I started making four grand or something, he sent me a Facebook message, a voice message. Saying, hey, hey, Ketan, I, I'm glad you're doing well. Can you give me a um, 30 to 60 second uh, testimonial or something telling me that you're doing so well and, you know, just say my name that I helped you doing so well. And, and do not use the seven figure mastermind name. Use my name. Use my individual name or something. And uh, I ignored it because, you know, he'd never been nice to me. Guess what? In two, three days, he sent it again. Hey, man, did you have a t chance to listen to my old voice message? So I spoke to my girlfriend and I spoke to my therapist back then. I was like, I don't want to do this, but should I do this? Or, you know, should I just do it and give it away? I gave it to him. I gave it to him like a voice message or something. Do was fucking toxic AF after and just a grown fucking man acting like an absolute child. Uh, and and then making uh, making excuses, like, like not taking responsibility, making excuses, which is ironic because he was the one that was going on about taking responsibility. Uh, at that point in time, one of my own friends who was working for me, a guy that used to call me his brother and stuff, uh, he kind of stabbed me in the back and just like went full tilt. And I ignored him at first. And then uh, and then I bought that up. I was like, dude, this guy was doing this for me. What? Like, how can you trust uh, outsourcing your Instagram DMs or something to somebody else? Because what if somebody just like goes rogue and destroys your page or some shit? And they're like, why would you think like that? Why would you have such small thinking like that? And I was like, oh, no, this shit actually happened to me because of this. So they like, okay, it's your fault. I'm like, well, okay. And... Um, and then later on, when he was incredibly rude throughout the entire meeting there, I actually I actually um, addressed him directly. I'm like, bro, you've been incredibly rude to me for some reasons I just don't seem to understand. Like, what's the problem and are we good and can we actually have like a good this thing? And he just wasn't taking responsibility. And then eventually, you know what he said? You know what, Kaden, I don't know why we've been talking about this. I was in caffeine throughout that entire three-day event, so I don't even know what happened there. Like, just fucking man up and take responsibility. man. Just pathetic, pathetic human being. And uh, he's the guy who's supposed to be, this guy is genuine, by the way. I'm like, how do I put this? His initial things are genuine. Initial urge to help is genuine. But like, but like after that, he's just been pushed into money and more money and more money. And everything has been, has goes into money and more money and more money for him. Everything just becomes more money for him, uh, which has polluted his method of interacting with the world and people and all that kind of stuff too. Uh, anyway, so this guy apparently considers him a brother and he's told him, I love you like a brother at some point in time. And that dude was asking me for a testimonial saying, don't use the business mastermind's name. Use my individual name that I helped you. I never complained about him to him or something like some other coach once asked me and I, I didn't even complain. She asked me like she kept on poking and prodding me. And, and by the way, she was toxic too. Um, she kept on poking and prodding me. And I told her about it after, but my point with all of this stuff, let's actually get back into the thing, right? This is the one of the best examples that I had for so much money, 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 money. Um, I mean, just random examples, fucking fresh and fit, have all kinds of money, pathetic beta males, pathetic, pathetic intelligence, just pathetic human beings. Uh, we'll get into all the other stuff after. My billionaire business uh, guru's marriage is falling apart. He's His kids are, uh, he's being separated by his kids or something. And he's this big guy that's a whole fucking family value kind of guy. This guy is epic. This guy came up from, um, this dude came up from this business coaching program. And uh, when he, lots of struggles, by the way, started off, I don't know how much he started, he started off with everybody else at 10K or something. When I joined them, he was doing, he had his first, 100k plus month for the third time in a row he made 130k or something uh, in a month or something 
for the third time in a row. He's made videos uh, uh, telling you how... Um, uh, he had, look at that. Seven figure something something student hitting her first 100k month. So he had this thing about... Um, oh, his uh, Facebook ads profile or something had broken down or Instagram had broken down or something. So like one of his biggest revenue sources, boom, just got cut off just like that, right? And uh, and he went running to the uh, to this guy to try and help him resolve the issue. And they all pulled their connections and everything else and helped him resolve the issue. This is one example out of a thousand I'm giving you. This dude goes up and just stabs him right in the back. Like this guy literally at the end of uh, that last, that same seminar that I went to was poaching other clients to start off his own current fitness, this thing that he's doing, the world's online, number one online fitness coach. There you go. The same thing. Um, oh my God, this is, the, this is exactly, his friend actually reached out to me. Spearsman. Something made that Chris Spearman, Spearman Chris, maybe this guy. Is that him? I think it is him. I think. Yep, this is him. This is him. This is the same. Is that him? Sales guru helping anyone here? I think so. Because this guy was trying to teach me the whole uh, 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 business coaching. There you go. Sales, sales, sales. Right? He was trying to teach me the whole coaching thing. I want to show you a story. Let's see what a story. Yes, I knew it. I knew this was the same story that he had before, like in a different manner. Like his story was, that's it. His story was the exact same thing. His story was, Look at me. I live such a glamorous life. Look at me. I'm enjoying my life here. I'll tell you what happened in that story, right? Why are you not showing the girl? There you go. He had the exact same picture fucking two years ago, bro. Two years ago, he had the exact same picture, dude. Oh, um, this dude, the Chris Spearsman dude. Uh, what, uh, him and this guy were sharing uh, the same fucking hotel room or something in 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 dubai's the big large building um uh, and they were sh this is what he this is what happened he showed your laptop he showed it closed like this he like he shut down his laptop he's doing a story closed down the laptop uh got up you know you can see this beautiful scenic scenery something on the outside and he's walking very slowly and he has like you can see like you know it's a beautiful fucking huge house on the inside uh all glass walls and all that kind of shit and uh he um he, uh, uh, he had like a miniature golf thingy in the balcony or something. He's on, I don't know, 75th floor, 100th floor, who, God, who fucking knows. What he's trying to show you is, you know, look at how glamorous my life is. You want this, right? Let me teach you. Let me teach you sales. Let me teach you this. Let me teach you that. Uh, and that guy and this guy teamed up together. And 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 this this Charlie Johnson bro gave his uh, all of his solutions to that guy. Uh, not solution, all of his credit to that guy. Even though I know this is the guy that actually... Actually, well, at least now I feel because at this point, I don't even know who's right. But, you know, I know that I know I know he used to be in this program because I saw him in the program. And this guy, where do you go? This dude, because he has clout at this point, every okay, same thing as some followers, right? Everybody's sucking his dick. Everybody is sucking. Oh, bro. I forgot about this. Um, Everybody's just sucking his dick. Everybody wants to do Instagram videos with him. Everybody wants to do YouTube, video, YouTube videos with him and everything. Same fucking dude. Cheated on, cheated on his girlfriend right there when I actually met him. That was happening in his life at that point or something. Um, <clears throat> this will all make sense when I come to the missing key. This will all make sense when I come to the missing key. Uh, and the Charlie Johnson do my own one-on-one -on -one coach do everyone insecure, cheating on their girls and boys. And everybody was a Bible thumper. Everybody's like, oh, Christ, Jesus Christ. I Everything I thank, I thank to God. Everything I thank, I thank to God. Thank... Um, is this oh uh let's see let's see it has to be charlie johnson right yes Fuck me, dude just fucking take me there because every time every single that was the thing that i noticed there was like every single one of these guys was a bible thumper every single you that was disgusting every single one of these guys is a bible thumper you know i don't want to see it fuck it every single one of them was like a bible thumper everyone god did this for me god is great god is this god is that and all fucking god 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 these are the same guys that I mentioned in that video that I've made a while ago in my life update. Same people that were like, uh, I feel bad. I feel like an imposter. And somebody asked them, why do you feel like an imposter? Because I'm telling my clients to do diets that I cannot do and it makes me feel bad. 
and then she's making her do like some kind of spiritual some healing some shit like oh no no you're okay you're not you something like that i'm like and i'm thinking there i'm like bitch of course you're an imposter if you can't do the diet how can how how can you tell somebody else to do the diet yes you're an imposter plus you're on drugs so you're literally lying to your fucking clients like yes you are an imposter and you should feel bad that's something coming from your conscience you should feel bad you don't want to hide that thing or throw it away with some bullshit uh this is those people what else was there uh, <clears throat> like what you like greg do said right uh when he started off like at this like i'm just i'm not going to get into it greg do said started off with barely any money started making his youtube channel all that kind of stuff why because he used to make how much 2 3 grand per month something like that he used to 3 4 grand per month um and then all he i assume he wanted to do was make a little bit more money right at this point uh, fancy cars huge house big business big youtube big supplements making big 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 fuck, fucking money right doesn't have his girlfriend of x many years anymore uh, broke up with ali doesn't have his best friend of x many years anymore uh, broke up with uh, johnny shreve and god only knows how many other people that he has broken up or had to break up or something relationships or something with i uh, and everybody keeps pushing me in this direction of making more money like my best friend is i i told him like you know i'm not i'm not i'm not just happy making money anymore i told him i'll get into that in a second but i don't i'm just not happy in making money anymore it's just not my money just isn't bringing me any happiness and just doesn't feel good and he's like uh, and i was like uh, i think i made the example of like what's the difference i you know i'm making x month right now like i like i mean all i'm going to do is just make this much more and then fucking buy a yacht or some shit but that's not going to fill the void it's not going to fill that thing if going from 20k which is i was making 20k per year up to 40k 50k didn't do it 75k didn't do it and then close to six figures didn't do it i i came this close to making six figures in my first year of business and by the way i couldn't have if i forced people to pay me the money that they owed me and i just didn't do it i just never followed up with them i just never did it and uh if that couldn't do it with me going five times the amount of money that i ever made in my life in like one year if that couldn't do it for me why would 150 250 1 mil why would that do it right if all of this shit hasn't done it like why would 1500 more girls do it why would um uh, being uh, 300 pounds at 6% body fat do it you know something like that uh and he's like oh why don't you just first get the yacht first and then figure out if it doesn't make you happy you know like weird i maybe it was a joke but i was like why are you thinking this way Uh, one of my other best friends is uh in New York and he's he's when I first met him god knows a decade ago I think he was making like 60 70k when I met him a couple of years after he was making 100 120k 20k I think 3 4 years ago when I met him he was making 200 250k and then last when I met him probably last year <laughs> last year I think he was making 350k he's married to his wife who's making 110 something k so combined they're doing like 460k and he's still just going on and on and on about like I like um who's that guy who's always on about sales that fucking old guy i forget his name this is the old guy that he's he's following about sales that's the like grand cardone grand cardone um he's like i like grand cardone i like this guy i like that guy i'm like why you already have all this fucking money like you're two people you don't even have any kids what, how much more money do you want and like he's driving a really fancy i forget which car he's driving it's a really fancy good car uh, he's driving a really fancy car now he just bought a new house or something some shit like that But I'm like, why do you need more money? Like people, people can live very comfortably. One human being can live very comfortably at seventy grand per year. Maybe now with inflation, say eighty five grand per year or something. Maybe right. So why do you need more? You have like three, four times, five times the amount of money. Why do you need even more? Like how is that going to get you any more security or benefit or anything? Uh, and he just doesn't get it. He just doesn't understand it. He's just going. The feeling of emptiness. So I've never mentioned this before. I, I yeah, I've never mentioned this before. Um when I first first the first deal that I ever closed the first deal slash the first line that I ever had I think I made 700 USD and I cannot tell you how happy I was when I made 700 USD because at that point in time I was doing my bullshit day job for immigration and all that shit and I was bringing in 2 grand CAD like less than 1900 800 CAD per month so to make 700 USD which is like half of my monthly salary for you know 160 hours i made that in one i i made that in one hour that was insane for me i was like dude that's fucking insane like you know the world has opened up all kinds of things have opened up for me that's insane the next time i felt really good when I, was when i closed a deal for 2500 bucks for the first time 
And the reason why 2,500 bucks felt really good is because when I was at the business mastermind, that's what their average numbers were. 2,500, 2,500, 2,500. Everybody was doing 2,500. There was like one exceptional guy who was making 250K per month who was selling his things at 4K per month, something like that. So 2,500 was a big win for me. Then I moved that up to three. Then I moved that up to four. There were there was a day that I built, I closed two 4K clients in one day. Um, uh, which means I made eight eight grand in one day. And the highest that I ever the high that I made five. I I closed a client for five. And the highest deal that I've closed so far in one phone call has been thirteen thousand dollars, thirteen thousand USD, which is like 15, 16 grand CAD. And I kid you fucking not. I didn't feel an ounce of greater happiness or something. Nothing. I felt a little bit of tension release or relief because, you know, I knew that, okay, the month's rent can go by and I can, uh, you know, pay all of the things that I'm, I have debt on or something like that. That was the only release that I had. Um, besides that, I was like, what do I eat for food? I, I swear to God, I... I hung up the phone call and I was like, okay, what's for food? Fuck, I didn't make any dinner. That that was it. There was nothing like, I'm going to go to Vegas. I'm going to blow this money. I'm going to buy this. I'm going to do that. Nothing. There was no ounce of happiness that came out of that thing for me, except for that thing. The only thing that I was thinking of at that point in time was like, how the fuck do I have the, how do I, how do my balls fit in this building? Like, how do my balls fit in this fucking city? How did I have the fucking audacity to ask for $13,000 or something? Um, that was the highest deal that I ever closed. And when I made that highest deal and I didn't feel an ounce of happiness, which is higher than anybody in my business mastermind, by the way, once I did that and I didn't feel any form of happiness, I was like, this isn't it. This is not what's bringing me happiness. And I don't want to do this. I, I just don't want to do this. Um, so that was the highest deal. That was a big eye opening, shocking. I want you to just think for most of you guys that have never made any money before, when I'm telling you the number 13,000 USD, you're probably going like, what bro my life would be made at 13,000 I can't think of anything I know I that's how I used to think and I'm telling you when I got up to $13,000 I'm telling you that's how it feels that's how I feel that's how it felt <laughs> um I made lots of money and along the way I lost l goodwill and goodwill takes a lifetime to create and it takes seconds to fucking go away um I wanted to have why did I make that much money and why did I have like had such high packages or something because I wanted to soothe my ego and feel good about having the highest selling package and against whom or compared to whom against compared to these toxic ass motherfuckers in my fucking business mastermind compared to these guys that I don't even care about their existence in my life. Um, I wanted to soothe my ego and feel good about having the highest selling package according to those guys. And I ended up alienating the people that were most important to me. Why and how? Because I've always been going on about the reason why I started off on anything. The reason I made anything, the reason I'm making this video right now is these are all the things that I needed to do when I was 18 years old, 19 years old, 21 years old, 20 years old, because I didn't start making big strides and make reaching my goals until the age of 28, 29. So I wasted 10 years in self-improvement per se or something. And, and when the guys have not a single one of my client testimonials are faked. Not a single one of them is, is Photoshopped. Not a single one of them is, is uh, not natural that I claimed is natural. The 70 pounds that I put on is not fake. The deadlifts that you've seen are not fake. The 50 pounds that I put on is not fake. The guys that are putting two inches on their arm, not fake. The guys that have gotten laid, not, not one of my client testimonials or anything is faked. Nothing is faked. Um, but yeah, I started this stuff off because I wanted to be the guy that helped my own 18 year old fucking lost 19, 20, 21 year old self that thought that, you know, and it took me 10 years to get, start getting some results. The reason I mentioned none of that stuff is fake because I helped all of these guys put two inches on their arms in like three, six months. I helped these guys get laid in like whatever, four or five months, five weeks or something that I told you about. Uh, I helped that uh, Asian kid put, uh, make his first one grand in the first four weeks of us starting together. Nothing of that is fake. Those, no, none of those client testimonials, they, you have seen their interviews and stuff as well. None of that shit is fake. I started off because I wanted to work with these guys because I wanted to do something good because I wanted to help these guys. And all I ended up doing, the way I, I got led astray, the way I got led astray was this whole chase for money. It's like, 
if they're giving you 1200 ask them for 1500 if they ask if they're giving you 1500 ask for two grand if they're giving you two grand ask for 2500 and my prices just kept going up from the guys that i wanted to help and guess what because these kids were so young 2500 for the year i feel is like more than is more than enough for like some kids to like kind of afford or something right i mean i don't know exactly know what the right number would be but 25 300 three grand or something for the year is like more than enough for like a kid that's like 18 to eight, uh, uh, 18 to let's say 21 or something for be, to be able to afford or something mm. um and that's what i was charging them for three months or something and repeatedly so guess what happened they couldn't afford me and they stopped working with me and they stopped reaching out to me and my business mastermind would have been like that's okay we'll find more clients and we'll find more coaching clients but that's not what i wanted and that's not what i cared about either uh, because the money wasn't the shit that I cared about. I cared about helping this guy out and I helped him out for the first three, four months. I helped this guy put on 40, 50 pounds or something. Naturally helped him get up to uh, two plus plate squat, two, uh, three plus plate deadlift or something. And by the time it came time to like cut him down, lead him out to get to a six pack, which is what he wanted to do, obviously at the start, I couldn't help him do it because he thought he couldn't reach out because he owed me money. And you remember when I said that I made, I came this close to making six, six figures out of the first year, I made 90 ish grand, 89 to 90 grand or something in the first year and these were the guys that owed me money that i didn't chase on i didn't chase after them um because i didn't want to chase after them all these guys that were doing so fucking fantastic which was the reason why i started off because that's the shit that fucking made me happy no, i couldn't do that anymore that left because these guys left because they thought they had to owe me money or some shit and my entire my purpose or whatever you might want to call it the reason why i started off got fucked because I, I, I misunderstood the direction I need to be going in or something. Um, I made lots of money and along the way, I lost a lot, a lot, a lot of goodwill. And, uh, this is actually one of the reasons why I haven't made a video in fucking forever. This is one of the reasons why I haven't made an Instagram video in forever. This is one of the reasons why I haven't made a YouTube video in forever because in doing all of this content creation. So if you look at my videos from two to three years ago, versus you look at my videos for the past year to year and a half, two years, there are some videos that I'm proud of. Yes. The secure video I'm very proud of the depression cure video, but I think that would be considered recent still. Oh, sorry. That would be considered old still. There are some videos that I'm very proud of, but I would have to be honest when I say this 90% of the videos I'm not proud of, you know why? Because I started getting into this thing about you can't take a week or two weeks or three or even a month to make a video. You want to, these guys did it. The business mastermind guy did make a con piece of content every day. You're going to make a piece of content every day because if you don't make a piece of content every day, uh, you're going to get left behind. And if you get left behind, you're not going to have enough followers. You don't have enough followers. You're not going to get enough money and all that kind of shit. It just got, it just got into what's the thing that gets you the most followers. What's the thing that gets you the most cloud? What's the thing that gets you the most eyeballs? Mm. And in doing that, I stopped editing my videos and, uh, and I feel like the quality went down. I'm telling you, I don't enjoy watching the videos that I made in the past year. I don't enjoy them. And it would be fan fantastic if somebody tells me that they enjoyed it because that means even with my own reduction in quality, I still had some valuable content to give. Imagine how much better that video could have been had I put in more effort into those videos. Um, and yeah, it was like every day you got to make a new piece of content. Every day, every day you got to do this thing. So then it just also started becoming, instead of like thinking about, mm. I want to make a video about reverse dieting or whatever it might be. I want to make a video about pickup or reverse dieting or something. All I'm thinking about is what's the hook? What's the clickbait title? What's the clickbait caption? What's the clickbait thumbnail? What's the hook that I have to, what's the perfect hook? Because this has to have the perfect hook. Because if it doesn't have the hook, people are not going to watch it. If they don't watch it, they're not going to get to the CTA or something at the end. If they're not going to get to the CTA, they're not going to buy my product and I'm gonna, not going to make any money. You know, it, everything got bastardized off that whole finance, 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 making money, making money, making money thing. That's why I started making videos because that joy and that passion of making content for the sake of making content to produce something beautiful just fucking went away. And, um, should I bring this into spirituality or <laughs> should I bring this into spirituality or should I, or, or not? No, oh, I'll, I'll, shit, I kind of answered the question, but. Um, uh, Dr. K from Healthy Gamer actually had a really brilliant piece of content that I've been trying to find once again. And he mentioned this thing. It's like, why does every piece of content that you create have to be published? Why does everything you create have to be published? Like, why can't you just write a book just for yourself? Why can't you just piece, make a piece of content or, create, or video just because you want to make it? Why don't you just edit a montage just because you want to watch it? Why do you have to create everything for it to be published? And because it has to be published, it has to have the perfect hook. And because it's a perfect hook, you have to like think so much about it. And da, 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 da. why can't you just create for the joy of creating? And that's what I realized. I just 
lost that joy of creating educational, valuable videos for the joy of creating those educational, valuable videos because it all started becoming about money. It all started becoming about, I need to have like this end goal. This is what I need to hit at the end of the month. This is my target. This is my KPI. That's what started happening. Um, and that was a brilliant video that kind of like told me that that's what you want is you want to create for the sake of creation because when you create for the sake of creation, right? Whoever, Michelangelo, Picasso, whatever it is, when the guy made it, I'm pretty sure he didn't make it thinking, I want uh, to make a picture that everybody will remember for the rest of their ages and it'll be considered the best piece of art forever. <clears throat> no, he probably, because you would be stuck. You wouldn't be able to make it at that point. Um, ironically, he probably made it. I want to make the best piece of art or something that I can come up with or think of to convey this idea that I have in my head. And it just so turned out that that idea just became like this big thing into this big artwork that everybody talks about. So I hope you understand that these things are not the things. And that's why I'm saying I'm one of the only guys in the world that actually knows what he's going through because I got the body in the six pack. I got the girls and I got the resources and the money. And none of those helped me with my feelings of emptiness or something. All right. So we finished resources. <clears throat> now the thing is every, this is what all of masculine development, self-improvement is sold to you right now. Get the physique, get the girls, get the money, you're king and you're going to be on top of the mountain and you're going to feel you're on cloud nine forever. This is the other thing that's come up right now, which is cloud. And cloud obviously is like this thing. And it, it, it does, you can see it makes a difference, man. Alex Ramosi has like X many million followers or something. Everybody wants to listen to his pickup advice. Everybody wants to listen to his bodybuilding advice. Everybody wants to listen to his relationship advice. It's not just him. Everybody wants to listen to his everything advice, even though he's a fucking moron. Uh, same thing with Hamza, moronic advice on fitness and health and nutrition, moronic advice on dating and girls, moron, um, actually kind of moronic advice, even on money uh, to a huge extent, but because he has the money and he has the cloud, you want to listen to everything he has to say, moronic advice on spirituality, but that's what he, that's what everybody wants to listen to because he has cloud. Cloud is just this thing which helps bring eyeballs of all the sheeple in the world, the people that cannot think. They're just like, oh, so many million followers, let's just follow what this guy is. Doesn't matter how you get it, but once you have it, you have status. And because you have more cloud, equal status in the hierarchy. Anything and everything you say is held as gospel by the sheep. Uh, I have some examples of people that just do not, th that I think are just pathetic examples of why they even have fame. Michaela Peterson, why is this girl famous? She has an autoimmune disorder of her own self. Uh, she has her N equals one case of using the uh, carnivore diet. Or oh, N equals two because of her dad, which she doesn't understand because her dad doesn't train. And we, there was a brilliant article with her and Joe Rogan on that. Doesn't understand about that. She has no idea or scientific background on anything. The only reason Michaela Peterson is um, famous is because she's the spawn of Jordan Peterson. That's it. That's it. She's the spawn of Jordan Peterson and she has a big mouth. That's it. Pathetic human being in terms of being a wife or something just horrible, dating Andrew Tate in the middle of her marriage or some shit like pathetic human being. Alex Ramosi, I've already gone through it like multiple, multiple times. Andrew Huberman, fantastic stuff about dopamine and shit like that. And then once that ended, once his expertise ended, now he's an expert for everything. People want to listen to his training advice, which is garbage. People want to listen to his nutrition advice and intermittent fasting, which is garbage. People want to listen to his uh, anabolics kind of based advice, completely dog shit. And the man thinks like, the vast majority of gyno comes from Deca. Like, shut the fuck up, dude. Um, Andrew Tate. Some things are fantastic. Most, uh, sorry, well, whatever. Like, whatever the split might be, 90, 10, 20, 80. I, I really don't care. Some things are fantastic. But because he has clout, everybody is doing everything. People are pulling out machetes on their girl. People are threatening their girlfriends. Um, people are just chasing after money like fucking crazy because that they think that's what needs to be done. Um getting into kickboxing or some shit just because he he's into kickboxing without thinking about getting punched in the face, getting concussions or some shit like that. Why? Just cloud. Greg Doucette. Uh, now that he has cloud, now his dating advice is being taken seriously. Political advice is being taken seriously. His critique and criticism, every single person is being taken seriously. Everything that he says because he has now cloud is being taken seriously. You would have that cloud kind of like, <clears throat> what's that? Dispersing too. When Greg Doucette started taking, uh, getting attention, his girlfriend's uh, Instagram page and everything else started getting attention because he has cloud, so it like transferred over. Johnny Shave's YouTube stuff, even though he must have made videos before, started getting pushed because Greg Doucette pushed him a little bit. So his friend started getting um, uh, cloud uh, 
influence and stuff as well. So cloud is just that thing. Once you have it and then you can start pushing it on to other people and that's when people want to come, want to come close to you because they want your cloud, they want your status. Kim Kardashian, this is the only person that I actually respect, by the way, who well, actually made a sex tape um, and then ended up getting cloud and then actually utilize it in other forms or something. But her cloud came because of sex tape. That's it. That's it. She had cloud and then she ended up using it in other things. Candace Owens, fucking moron, like just absolute moron. People in my fitness business mastermind, all they're chasing after is more followers, more Instagram, more followers, more Instagram because it has more, more Instagram followers and all that shit because it has more, um, I have actually a brilliant other idea, uh, example actually too, um, uh, uh, to get more followers because the idea is more followers equals more potential clients equals more results and numbers and money. I remember there was this thing when I first started off, there was like a thousand dollar investment that the big guy, the main guy had actually bought about for all of us. And he said, use this service because this service, here's how it works in really short. They're going to do a giveaway uh, by some big person. I don't know. The Rock will do a giveaway. Some big fucking dude will do a giveaway. And in order to get a part of that giveaway, you want to, uh, uh, you pay the supplying company a thousand dollars and they'll put yours and 10 other people's Instagrams uh, that, they, you know, they have to follow this in order to get, be a part of this giveaway. So they will come and follow your page. And uh, once they follow your page, because you know, that big giveaway is happening by some 3 million follower guy, you will end up getting like a thousand, 2000 followers at least, or something like that. Right. Some even got 10,000, 11,000, 15,000 followers. And, uh, and you will have more followers and now you will, you will have more followers and that will help you get more clients or something. You can, uh, what's that called? You can nurture those people or something like that. So I asked him at first it made sense. And then I did some Google analytics and social media analytics myself. I already paid the money up front because I thought it was like a limited time deal because that's what these business guys do is like, no, take it, take this action now. Otherwise it's never going to happen. So, um, so I already paid the money first. And then later on, I did a little bit of research. All the guys that ended up going from like 400 followers to 16,000 followers, their engagement dropped from 7% to 0.2%. If your engagement on your Instagram page is that bad, Instagram isn't going to push your shit. So he ended up going from 400 followers to 16,000 followers and nobody was watching his shit anymore. So he just ended up uh, shooting himself in the foot. And this had been multiple different examples. So I tried to, because I thought he would have understood this. I reached out to him and I explained the whole thing to him. And he was like, what? I don't, I don't get it. And I can guarantee you, he got it. I guarantee you, he got it. He just wanted the referral bonus that he got from me paying a thousand bucks. Cause I'm sure he, he made like 250 bucks. So when you get all of these things, because John Anthony had the body, he had the girls, he had the resources, he had the money and he had the clout. Why did John Anthony still commit suicide? Why was he still lost? What was there in his mind that was gone? He already went through the mental health things. He didn't have any mental health issues. He was a mentally strong guy. You can't get this, uh, the dieting. You can't do the dieting. You can't do that properly. You can't train that hard if you don't have a, a strong mind. You, you can't go out and get rejected by girls again and again and then, and then brush it off if you don't have a strong mind. You develop a strong mind using these things as well, of course, and, but you already have to have something like that. You can't make that much money because before making 100K per month, um, this, if this 100K per month is right now is happening now after seven, eight years or something in the game. I can guarantee you when he first started off, he definitely made a hundred, less than 100K a year. I can guarantee you that. And um, because he has pictures and stuff about that two, three grand per month, or I've watched his videos back in the past. So I made more money than him in the first year. And what was my point there? Oh yeah, you, because you go through trials and errors and this didn't work and that didn't work, you, you can't give up. You don't have like a quitting mindset. You just keep on going. Oh. So he had the strong mindset. He was he didn't have depression. He didn't have this disease. He didn't have anything. He, uh, this is the other thing, my purpose, my purpose. I'm going to do it for somebody else. I'm going to do it for something greater than myself. Our self-improvement movement. You know, that thing that working for something greater than you alone. Um, this idea of owing your life and its efforts to the betterment of mankind. He did it. I did it slash I do it because if you've been through his masculine development website, it's actually brilliant. His examples are kind of trash and shady, but the content that he makes is amazing. Uh, he did it. I did it. And as enjoyable as it is, it can feel very, very empty. Uh, okay. And then there's some, there's some other advice that I got. Uh, so this doesn't work. My point with this was actually, this doesn't work. Working for something greater than you alone does not work when you are not satisfied. And there's a void in you that's not getting filled because if there's a void in me, that's not getting filled coaching 16 year old kids, even though I've done that helping, uh, so many 14, 15 year olds get over their, uh, eating disorders, even though I've done that, 
helping people that have never uh, hadn't been dating in five years, helping them get laid in five weeks, even though I've done that, those things don't help fill that void inside of you. So as much as there's benefit for me to help them, I don't really care about helping them at that point because there's a void inside of me that I need to fill up first. It's that whole thing about fill up your own cup before you fill up uh, and have it over pouring or something before you fill up other people. So it's that thing. Um, advice. Why don't you retire your... I've heard this from some other kids that I, I've spoken with. Why don't you retire your parents? It sounds like a very noble mission or cause or something, right? But I don't care about this. I don't care about retiring my parents. My parents are doing way better than I am. In fact, in fact I reach out to them and they hey, hey guys, can you float me for a little bit because I'm not working right now. It's like, I don't, I don't want to retire my parents. Like, I don't even care about it and they don't want me to retire them. They don't have that tension or stress. And... Here's the best or worst part. If I were to retire my mom, I kid you not, she's probably going to fall sick because she's an actual workhorse. She's an actual donkey. Like if I take over, take her one joy of life away from her, which she loves to do, which is to work. She cannot stay not busy. She has to be busy all the time. If I take that away from her, I actually feel like it would, it would hurt her health as opposed to help her. Why don't you, the other one is why don't you go live in the villages of India around elephants? And this is this whole thing about going to the mountains and forsaking everything or something. And I can't see myself enjoying that either because I love technology. I live for technology. I'm a guy that loves technology. I love it. I I adore it. I don't want to live without technology. So that's not my thing either. I enjoy nature. I enjoy peace. I enjoy taking hikes. I enjoy meditation here and there. I enjoy all of these kinds of things, but that's not something that I want to do full time all the time or something. I don't want to do that. Um, and then this is my friend, right? Why don't you buy one yard and then figure out if that's the issue or not? And no, that's not the issue either. So the body doesn't do it. The girls don't fill it. The resources don't fill it. The cloud doesn't fill it. The purpose doesn't fill it, right? Because John Anthony was doing it. He was fulfilling this purpose, right? Even that doesn't do it. So what exactly is it that does it? What, why did he kill himself? John wasn't depressed. John was lost because this didn't do it. 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 Everything that everybody says should do it for you. Didn't do it. Okay, now... Now, the reason why most people will never get to this, I'll tell you why most people will never get to this. Most people will never get out of this chase. The chase for money, most people will never get out of the chase for this, this thing. They will never get out of this thing. They will never get out of the chase for this thing. Some of them, uh, once if some of them have money or something, then they will start moving into either this or this. And then, some, and then quite a few people can accomplish this if they actually put down their mind to it. And barely anybody will push themselves to try and accomplish this because they're just scared. Their approach anxiety is a crazy fucking thing. The negative thoughts in your head when it comes to pickup is a crazy fucking thing. So barely anybody will do this. So most people will never chase their base, uh, finish, satisfy their base hunger for money. That's never going to happen. If some of them do, then they may or may not have the balls to do these things, which means in their mind, they will always have something left to chase for. They will always have something left to chase for the body of the girls. So then they will try and go for those things. But barely will anybody on planet Earth ever do this and this and this and this. And even I haven't done this. Even I haven't done cloud. But I don't really care about cloud as much as as opposed to how much I care about it for me to get more eyeballs to actually spread my message around there. And because my message recently had gotten polluted about the money thing, I, I don't have the motivation to do this at this point in time. So... Because nobody will go through these things, they don't get to this feeling or the sense of purpose of loss or feeling lost or something. Because you think I would get this and this and this and this, I should be at the top of the world. Nobody will get here. Nobody will get here. That's the thing is nobody will get here. This is where I put in the other one, I'm already 30 or why live anymore? That video, right? I put the same thing in there. Why live anymore? I made the money. I got the pickup. I got the physique. What else is there to live for at this point? And that's the feeling of lost. And that's the depression or the depressed that you have is like you're lost. Not that you have a chemical imbalance in your brain. That's not why he killed himself. It's because he's just lost. And here's why I feel he was lost is because just like me, he's a very type A, logical minded, aggressively logical minded, science oriented kind of guy. And because I had been that for my entire life too, until I started doing psychedelics and then I started going and researching other things around psychedelics because psychedelics kind of opens your mind to things that you cannot see and you cannot feel, oh sorry, you cannot see and you cannot feel tangibly. You cannot feel them, but you can feel them. Like you kind of even know that they exist or something. You've seen them. I close my eyes and you can see these things, right? When you take the psychedelics, the things that you don't see in real life, suddenly you can start seeing them. I can see portals to different dimensions and shit. I can see the most beautiful thing in the most plain white 
ceiling up here. It's it's like that. Um, so you can see things that you could otherwise not see in the real world. So that kind of takes you out of, okay, there's more to life than just science and then things that I see in the real world. What he was missing, in my opinion, was that meaning, uh, not that meaning, sorry. Was that, what's that thing? Because like, he already chased this, chased this, chased this, chased this. And then he didn't know where to go next. And that was a void. And what he was missing was spirituality, in my opinion. He was missing, oh, 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 the reason why he killed himself was because of the lack of hope. Because he had lost hope because he achieved this, he achieved this, he achieved this, he achieved everything, right? And after achieving everything, it still didn't, he still didn't get what he wanted to get. And that's my opinion is he lost hope because there's nothing else left to accomplish. There's nothing, at that point in time, there's nothing else left to get to get you to somewhere where you want to get. And that's where spirituality comes in. This is the thing that he was missing. <clears throat> spirituality is intangible you don't you don't you can't touch it you can't see it you can't uh, you can't touch it and you can't see it you can't taste it shit like that this is interfacing with the world all based on how you feel and see the world not on how the world is in ones and zeros um uh okay i'll give an example of that if me and my dad both get into the uh into cars and we have to move somewhere and there's like a crazy traffic for 20 25 minutes my dad goes insane. My dad starts beating his chest and he starts throwing temper tantrums and he's like, why is he cutting like this? Why is he cutting that? People are stupid. They don't know how to drive. They don't know how to do this. They don't know. Pathetic people. He just goes into this thing and starts giving himself a panic attack and a heart attack. When I get into a 20 minute traffic jam and people are going insane, I'm like, well, wow. Okay, that, that guy's stupid. I'll just turn on a podcast. I'll just listen to some music. I'm thinking more like, Shit, I got 20 extra minutes to try and consume something that I didn't have before. Even if it's dog shit, bullshit, anything. I have like 20 minutes to listen to music and meditate or something. When I get those 20 minutes, I think in this way and my dad thinks in the opposite way. When there's a problem for me, most of the times when I'm in a good mindset, you know, generally in a good momentum in my life and therefore my mindset has been developed to be strong. When I get a problem or something, I'm like, okay, cool. That's a problem that we can get to solve. But my mother kind of is like a little bit different. She's like instantly as soon as she sees a problem, it's like, oh my God, problem, problem, problem. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Something like that. And it's like, it's the same thing. The problem is exactly the same thing. It exists just like that in the real world. But it's like, how are you thinking about the thing? Is this um, like, uh, Let me actually even just give you something else. Like if there is a problem in the world. Oh, you know what? How do I frame this? I'm trying to get God, the idea of God or something into this. But I think my, 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 like when they believe in spirituality and uh, with God comes alongside, spirituality is separate from God, but God is a part of spirituality. Uh, and religion is just bastardization of spirituality. That's what religion is, in my opinion. And, um, it's this thing. I, I, I'm trying to give you like an example. What happened with my parents? I think my mom said, you know, this thing happened or something or something about being scared. Like something like God is, uh, she's afraid of God in some aspect of something, which I don't remember anymore. And I was like, why do you believe in God? But then your God is vengeful. Like, why is your God vengeful? Like if I was God, if I was this fucking incredibly powerful fucking thing that created everything and everything else, and you're one of my children or some shit, and even like, if, let's say there's a God that exists and I'm here like me and I say, dude, God's a stupid fucking faggot. Like, fuck this guy. You know, uh, he's not going to look down upon me and be like, you're rude to me. Boom. I'm going to fucking spite you down with thunder. He's probably going to be like, oh shit, I guess he's going through a hard time. Let him do his own thing. Whenever he wants to talk to me, whenever he wants me, whenever he needs me, when he put, whenever he starts putting action in, I know the alarm bells going off that he like, I need to look out for him. So why would this, why would you fear God is the whole thing. Like I'm trying to give you like an example, but it gives you more a sense of calm and relief and even clarity and purpose. That's, that's what it does. And it's not purpose. It's like, it's like a basic, simple level of clarity and purpose. This is the missing key with these type A alpha aggressive, logical, science minded, atheistic people. It's because you can't see it, touch it, you know, something like that, but you can feel it in your head and your heart or something. That's what spirituality kind of is, which is, which is what was missing. Now I'm going to give you an example of lack of integrity, morals, or principles or something, which comes from the lack of spirituality or something. There's this fucking thing who, uh, uh, whose uh, shirt and their slogan is integrity is everything. These guys are in my gym. 
and uh, I know a couple of them. I'm obviously not going to mention who's who or anything. These guys in my gym, right? I went into my comfort zone and I, and I uh, ordered supplements, steroids from two of these guys. And I didn't realize this for the longest one. It took me like six months, eight months or a year to realize this. Um, I, it took me a year to realize. And then I realized these guys were selling me fake shit. These guys are selling me fake shit. And I must have bought like 1500 bucks, maybe even two, two grand worth of stuff from them. For, from two of these guys. And on the back of their shirt and the shirt that they're repping says integrity is everything. That's their shirt is that integrity is everything. And they're selling me fake gear. And I'm assuming they're also selling other people fake gear. Now, thank God the gear was only fake and not actually dangerous or harmful because that would have been fucking really bad. Um, one of the, and then, you know, when I realized it, the day that I realized it, I was kicking myself. I was, I was punching myself. I was kicking myself. You know why? Because one of the guys that sold me that fake gear uh, had a, a fiance, wife or something, and they had a dog together or something. And he ended up cheating on her or something, something like that. So, and a very simple example or an idea of a person that does not have morals, principles, and integrity and shit. So if this man does not have morals, principles, integrity in his own life, in the person with the person that he shares a bed with, that he's so close to, what the fuck am I as some random consumer, consumer or some shit? I am nobody. I am nothing. The fact that he didn't give me shit that caused me like an infection or something, I should be thankful to him and God and every, thank you for just giving me fake shit. And not like actually harmful shit. Because why would he give a shit about me at that point? Um, yes, that's an example. That's an example. Yeah. Okay. The bastardization of God. <clears throat> now, this is a very good example from all the seven-figure mastermind motherfuckers. The bastardization of God. Religion is entirely and completely bastardized at this point. Whether it's Christianity, whether it's Islam, whether it's... Hindu or the um, Sikh uh, or something like that. Whenever somebody goes about thumping their Bible, you know, thumping the God says this and you're going to feel this. And if you don't do this and God's going to be mad with you, give this money, do this thing, do that thing. Religion is entirely bastardized at this point. Um, all these guys in the seven figure mastermind, every single one of them was a Bible thumper. Every single one of them that I told you about there was a Bible thumper. Every single one of them. Every single one of them was lying about different shit. Every single one of them was trying to take money from each other. They were poaching each other's clients and all that kind of shit. It was just fucking pathetic. They were on drugs and they were telling you that they weren't on drugs. They weren't doing the diets and they were telling you to do the diets. All of those motherfuckers that are like, God, 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 God is looking out for me. All of those motherfuckers. Um, all the, Indi the same shit happens in Indian gurus and temples. And uh, I think my mom actually called this out once. And this was like one of the most brilliant things. She was like, I forget who she was telling me about some neighbors or some shit. She was like, you know, they go out there and they do these things in their business every day that is wrong, which we knew about what they were doing in their business every day that is wrong. And then they come home and they, they ring this little ghanti and then they do this fucking arti and shit in front of the, uh, the little murti uh, at home, this little statue at home. And um, see, back then I didn't have obviously the level of wisdom, education or uh, logical reasoning or anything. And I honestly did even think because everybody's doing it, God probably even forgives you like that. God does forgive you. And I'll get into that in a second. I think it comes after, I think. God does forgive you, right? And I don't know how to, I'm not going to talk about my ideas about God or something. Okay, let me just tell you one thing. I started off because in the family, I was religious because my parents were like religion, 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 not religion, never pushing it, but they were like, you know, God exists. So I was like, okay, cool. Maybe God does exist. Then at the age of 17, 16, 17, 18 or something, I realized that, okay, God's just fucking bullshit. It's just all fake. And I became an atheist until maybe when I started doing spirit, spirit, um, psychedelics and shit until a certain point. Then, then I became an agnostic. I'm like, God, the way that everybody says is God is not what actually exists. But something exists. Something is out there. I don't know what it is. I don't know how it is. But I feel like there's something definitely out there. Um, and uh, I'm not going to go into further. Uh, that's going to be a separate video. That's going to be my next video. Should you choose to believe in God? That's going to be my next video. Um, so guys, I think Indian gurus and the people that do that, all the wrong shit, right? And then I used to think, okay, God is probably just this guy who takes his hundred dollar donation and fucking rids you of your fucking, uh, sins and shit. Uh, because that's what people do. They cheat on their wives and girlfriends and break up their families and destroy and disappoint their kids and shit. And then they'll go into, um, what was that church place to repent or something? And they'll be a, forgive me father for I've sinned. And they keep doing that every fucking month or couple of months. So that's bullshit. That's fucking dog shit. That's bullshit. 
And then the fear of God example, I had the parents example, but I don't have a particular example or something. But yeah, I mean, I think it was like more like whenever something happens, they're like, is God punishing us or, or they they just feel helpless. I think it's the thing is like, they just feel helpless. And I'm like, don't you keep believing in God? Don't you keep bringing up the Upanishads and the Bhagavad Gita and the this thing and the that thing? So like, if you truly fucking believe in God, why don't you think he's going to look out for you? Why do you think he's always trying to fuck you over somehow? So you don't actually believe in God, right? And if your God is a vengeful motherfucker, why do you believe in him? I don't understand. It just doesn't make any sense to me. So um, that was that. Here's how God actually, in my opinion, should exist or something. Your belief in God should be like your love for your woman and child or even your friends and family. Those that really believe in God don't go about Bible thumping. If you did right, you, God, knows that you did right, right? If I stuck to my diet, if I did the training, I did the cardio, I took care of my kid, I took care of my girlfriend, I, I was a nice guy, I, I didn't wrong anybody. I look into the mirror and I know myself and I like myself. I know I didn't do anything wrong. If you did something wrong, and I've been open about this in the past when I was uh, I cheated on some of my uh, girlfriends or something in the past, I hated looking at myself because it, it didn't matter whether she knew or not. It mattered that I knew and I, I had to like forgive myself and I, it took me fucking forever to try and forgive myself. If you did right, God knows you did right. If you didn't do right, again, do right. Again, you know you aren't, you know, you aren't condemned to hell. You are supposed to repent and give penance for it. That's the most important thing about this God thing. It's You're not, not allowed to make mistakes. As a human being, you are allowed to make mistakes because it's the most natural thing in the world because clearly we aren't perfect, right? You are allowed to make mistakes. You're allowed to waste time. You're allowed to fuck up. You are, you're allowed to like wrong people murder people or some shit you are allowed per se to do that but you have to repent your shit and give penance like you have to genuinely repent and 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 give up for it what do you like invest for it and i don't mean money because that's how that's the easiest method people do is like oh i'm just gonna give money to god and to the church and this thing and that should be fine you are supposed to invest in somehow i will do something good i will go and volunteer here i will go and teach kids for free i will go and volunteer my time X, Y, Z, different places. I will clean up the streets. I will, whatever it is that you need to do to think that you need to do to earn your own, this thing and, and give repentance or penance is your thing, whatever it might be. Um. So yeah, so that is, if you do want to believe in God, that's your real true method of, of believing in God, not the bastardization of God that exists through religions and shit. The benefits. Uh, okay, well, okay, you know what? Actually, yeah. So you know that my girl is Christian. So here and there for like uh, big events, Christmas, New Year's, uh, Lent, uh, uh, she asked me like, hey, babe, can you uh, can you please join me at the church? Can you please join me at the church? So one of these days, I actually joined her at the church uh, for a Lent lecture. And one of the lessons of Lent was very, very, very important, very useful for me. Wow. Wow. I had these guys, no fucking way. <laughs> it's so funny. I was actually trying to bring these guys up. This guy's name was Kasim or Kasim or some shit like that. And uh, he was this guy that was on YouTube and stuff. Um, uh, anyways, he met me at this point in time when I wanted to leave because I was unhappy with my stuff. So I wanted to leave uh, and I didn't want to do anything. So he was like, hey, just let me outsource all of your shit, shit to me. And uh, I will um, uh, let us do it. Uh, you know, pay us this much money and we'll help you get these money, this much business in this thing. Long story short, I got scammed for 2500 USD right? For some of you, it's a huge amount. Honestly, for me, it's not a big amount, but it's not because I have the money right now. I'm fucking broke. I don't have the money. I haven't worked in like forever because of all the reasons I mentioned before, but it's not because 2,500 bucks is a big amount or not a big amount. I was mad that he fucking scammed me. And because I consider myself to be smart and intelligent, I can see these fucking scammers like Leo and Longevity, Alex from Mosey. I can see these scammers from a trillion miles away. I was like, fuck, how the fuck did I get looped into this? And the reason I got looped into it because I was weak in a moment of weakness or something. It's it's hard to explain. I'll explain that after. It doesn't even matter. Anyways, I was really mad. Really mad. Really mad. And I was holding on to that resentment. I was like, dude, I'm gonna make fucking YouTube videos destroying them. I'm gonna make uh put them out on my social media that they were that they're fake or something. Da, 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 da. You know, I'll destroy their name or something. Ironically, they they immediately quit already. They made a bunch of money and they already left. Uh so the benefits. The Lent example. When I went to that Lent, uh, this uh, lecture or something of hers at her church, he, um, uh, the lesson there was a lot of times in life when we are upset or we are hurt or we are hurting or something, 
what we do is we in a moment of anger fit in a rage or something we try and hurt the other person and we do it because we are hurting so we think it's okay to hurt the other person and when we and our goal i think at that point is to or our rationale at that point is that because i'm hurt i'm going to hurt them and if i hurt them it's going to make me feel good but is that really true is hurting somebody else actually going to really make you feel good and the real answer is no and everybody every grown mature person knows that hurting somebody else is not going to make you feel good maybe for a 5 second you might have that little gratification but like immediately after that you don't feel good and it, i was holding on to that pain that hurt that fucking anger that thing for so long i'm going to fucking destroy these motherfuckers fuck these guys you know some all that kind of shit and and that one lecture that one little thing even though i'm not christian or something that one little thing i was like she's fucking right and it's, it's because it's a psychology thing it's not a it's not a religious thing it's not a christian thing or anything it's a psychology thing she's like she i don't know it's a spiritual psychology thing right she's right hurting them is not going to make me feel good so why do i care just like fuck it dude it happened 2500 bucks if i ever want to make it back i can make it back like this right i can make it back like that why do i fucking why am i carrying this shit why am i carrying that pain why am i carrying that fucking hurt fuck these guys fuck them let them go let them go and that was such a small example of spirituality being done right um my girl getting a job uh i'm not going to get into the details of it right now because this is going to be in the next video but i can tell you the difference between her getting a job versus not getting a job was literally her belief in spirituality itself i'm not going to go into the details of that right now i'm not getting affected by stupidity so uh one of my friends uh uh him and his wife married against the wishes of his mother his mother is a very toxic immature human being um so there was some kind of something happening where everybody knows the my friend and his wife knows what they did or they didn't do or something and the mother obviously knows what they did and they didn't because it happened between them so the mother is saying that you did this this and this and they're saying no we didn't no we didn't you know we didn't we were right there and this is what happened you did. so they were going back and forth in this tutu mein mein back back and forth back and forth thing and they were getting angrier and angrier and angrier and this was happening by the way 3 years ago during my prep and i was like bro why are you a part of this thing and uh uh they said uh, oh because she's lying i'm like you know that she's like of course we know that we were there and she was there so i was like bro if you know that she knows that i was like yes so motherfucker if you know that and she knows that and she's lying then she knows that she's lying so like yes so it was like if she knows she's lying and your conscience is clear because you didn't do it then why do you care let her lie she knows she's lying like why are you letting it bother you why are you letting it affect you and i think it was it was just like eye opening or something for me like because they were stuck in that thing in that egotistical battle of back and forth and back and forth if somebody tomorrow comes and tells me that you're a child molester i'm not going to be i'm not going to start defending myself because i don't need to defend myself because i know whether i am or i'm not if somebody says you're a fucking murderer I'm not going to defend myself because why do I need to defend myself? Because I know whether I'm a murderer or not. You can think whatever you need to think, but I don't need to explain myself to you because my conscience is clear and that's where that spirituality thing kind of kind of comes in. I was actually speaking to one of my other this this guy that I really like, he's young, uh 18 19 years old or something like that. And I think one day he just like came and confessed to me he's like, "Bro, I'm feel really I feel like a piece of shit because people think I'm a pedophile." I'm like, "What? What the fuck happened?" So he goes into this entire detail of like this this misunderstanding. He's 18 years old by the way. The girl that that he's been considered a pedophile with is like an online interaction, not even a real life interaction, and who's 16 years old. So I'm pretty sure even legally you can talk about sex and all these kinds of things with them. I'm pretty fucking sure there's like a 4 or 5 year age something something. Uh window or something. At least in in here it is like this is a 5 year window or something. A 16 year old can see with a 21 year old or something like that. And uh So he's like you know this thing that they misunderstood my thing and everybody's uh uh treating me as if I'm like a pedo or some shit. I'm like okay. Are you a pedo? Like did you try and do it in the direction of like trying to solicit sex from like a minor or some shit? He's like no 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 I didn't I did it. So it's like then let motherfuckers say whatever they fuck they want to say. Why does it fucking matter? Because you know you didn't do wrong. People can paint a picture of you however they want, but you didn't do it that way. So why does it matter? like these people are showing you they're immature they're stupid and they're pathetic you don't want to be friends with them you don't want them in your life or something let's let's find somebody else that's actually much more mature or something we don't need these people so it doesn't matter what other people think or something because that thing comes from within 
spirituality thing kind of comes from within there's no ego flex there's no nothing else it's just a how do you think about things from within um and i think that was the thing that was missing and and uh that's my answer for it is like he accomplished everything that he was supposed to accomplish or something he decided that he wanted to accomplish outside not getting what he wanted to get made him feel um made him feel like really really empty because he didn't know where to go next and the the answer there i think because because he was such a logically or- oriented minded person and he probably didn't have friends that were spiritual he didn't believe in spirituality and he didn't have friends that could push him in that direction either or spirituality which is why he felt like he was going to be empty forever and in the moment of weakness or something i think he decided to end it for himself uh and it was because of that lack of hope because he think he thought that void would never get filled and I had this uh, coaching call with John Sommers you guys know I like him you guys know I respect him and everything right I had this coaching call with John Sommers and I was going through the same thing and I'm like John I'm money is not making me happy I don't know what to do I'm lost money is not making me happy and he's like no no uh I think it's just a, a fear of you're not going to make enough money or you're not going to make as much money or some shit like that I was like no that's not what it is I'm uh, I don't think that's what it is and uh, he's like um, what did I say I was like you know I just said something about like you know I don't have to worry about money or something He's like, no, no, you. It's way better to make your own money as opposed to relying on anybody else or something. I'm mean, like, I understand that, but that's not that. My fear isn't about lack of resources or something. And uh, I think that's what he was trying to say about the whole thing. <clears throat> and I didn't think about it. Again, I have massive respect for John. I didn't think about this then, but I mentioned this in the other video. Most people don't fear this thing, have this thing, or anything because they create their own mission, their own meaning, and their purpose to live. and their own meaning and purpose to live is their child so they end up having kids before 30 most people end up having kids because when you have kids 10 million dollars is not enough because you have that fear of losing your child or your spawn and you're like i'm never going to have any kind of pain going to go to this kid and you're like oh okay so i'm uh, 10 mil- 10 million dollars is not enough a billion dollars is not enough because god forbid what happens if she ends up getting this disease and it costs like 1 billion dollars and elon musk is the only person that can create this your for her and it costs a billion dollars to do it so then we'll be broke then it's that that irrational fucking fear that's in your head that things will just never it never be enough because you have a kid or something nothing will ever be enough um and 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 john before he even got into self improvement always had a kid so that was his thing like like i'm again i don't mean this in any form of disrespect or something but i reached out to him a couple of times for advice or something when i was feeling lost and he tried to push me more into like a coaching call like a 1500 dollar coaching call i've taken those coaching calls twice or thrice so 4500 bucks i've already spent there i bought his well never that never runs dry program that was like 2 grand spent 2 grand there and i paid 1000 dollars for his for infinite contact with him for his bulldog mindset membership platinum whatever bullshit thing for lifetime membership or something so i've already given him more than 10 grand or something do i find value in it and all that kind of stuff yes sure but i have never gone back into it ever again so would i would i consider that a waste absolutely not but he didn't need to push me as someone that he knows that has the ability uh, to do and and you know is determined all that shit to do to do this all things that are hard this thing this thing this thing this thing everything to do everything that's hard we've had discussions about this thing he didn't need to push me or have me pay 1500 bucks once again to give me some advice or guidance or something like that when i was looking for guidance when i was lost and in doing so he lost a little bit of goodwill from me and uh, and the other thing is like he's been very open with it he makes more than 200k per month i think something like that 80k per month at least minimum maybe 200k per month that was like a while ago so my 1500 bucks is not going to help him pay his rent or anything nothing right so he didn't need that thing from me so he's also in the same chase for money which is way beyond anything that he will ever need his daughter will ever need his wife will ever need anything that anyone will ever need so it's just that non stop thing this thing which whenever people keep coming into about making money and making money so important i'm like yeah making money is important yes but this if you get stuck on this hamster wheel you will stay on this hamster wheel forever forever you will stay on this hamster wheel forever so be very careful about and that's why i keep pushing you please first get So before you get to this you want to get this and before you get this you want to get this this will always be the base your bodybuilding your fitness goals your all that kind of stuff will always be the base first then you move from here to here and then you move from here to here because this you will do for the rest of your lifetime 
And while you're doing these two things, pick up a fucking bullshit minimum wage job that just helps you to invest into these two things. But this money should not be your, your all time thing. Um, that's that, that's that, that's that, that's that. <clears throat> this is why I started making YouTube videos and IG videos because I've been suckered into the clicks and the likes and the clicks through uh, click throughs of calls to actions. Make a better thumbnail, bro. And people that advise you on this thing too, the same guys that advised me. First, they were like, bro, you uh, hire these people from here, bro. Your CT has to be the best. Your thumbnail has to be the best. Then they suggested these thumbnail guys who did really well. Literally one month in, while the time I was training the thumbnail guy. In a month from now, bro, Hamza doesn't make videos like this, bro. You got to watch Hamza's thumbnails. They're just like basic uh, Canva uh, text paint uh, something. I'm like, do you guys not have a thing like where you set your feet or something? Like you're just jumping from here, here to here, here to here. Here is Nayebola, Usna Wobola, Usna Wobola, Usna Yebola. Like why are you jumping? Don't you have like a thing of your own that this makes sense or this makes sense? So, um... Anyways, do this editing. Don't do this editing. Oh, yeah. Don't edit and just mass produce and da 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 The videos I made, I've mentioned this before. Over the past year and a half, two years, have been things that I have myself not been proud of. Um, this video, I can promise you, it hasn't even been made yet. It will be made. And I can tell you this video I'm proud of. And I can tell you this video will be something that I will probably want to listen to at least twice or thrice. Um, I, I guess this should have been right at the start. Maybe somewhere I can actually put it right at the start. But this is the reason why I kind of feel like I'm the one of the only other people in the world that would have this um, feels what he's feeling and going is going through what he's going through because I made this post a year ago. I don't remember when it was 20th September 2022. I made this post that I've accomplished everything that I need to in like three four years. The girls, the dating, the money. I've done everything, and I even had the same question about. What is the actual true purpose of life? Is it to, you know, these are the things that are important. Is it self-actualization, like self-improvement to the nth degree? Is it selfish hedonism, just like move into drugs um, and just pursue your pleasure? Is it selflessness service? Okay, you know, purpose, your purpose. Or what is it? That's, I asked the exact same thing back then. That's why I know this is exactly what he was going through. Um, And that's that. That's, that's pretty much that. That <clears throat> feeling of feeling lost is one of the worst feelings in the world. And how do you get over it? I can tell you how you get over it because I'm there and I'm doing things. I'm not saying I'm, I'm over it, but I'm, I'm going through it. And the way to go through it is to simply just stop everything else and just go through it. This is why for the past couple of months, I've just been playing video games. That's it. I dominated Fortnite because I wanted to do it. I didn't want to work to make money. I didn't want to work with any clients. I didn't want to make any posts on YouTube videos. I didn't want to make any posts on Instagram. Instagram. I don't care about helping anybody else while i feel like i'm empty i bought z's i bought my puppy my boy because uh i felt the need because i always wanted to do it someday i will get a dog someday i'm 34 35 years old someday i'll get a dog that's never gonna happen i made 10 grand per month someday i'll have enough finances to get a dog that's never gonna happen that's why i went out and got this guy immediately i'm like i need this guy i need this kid i need to do this for myself in my life and stuff um so yeah so the method around it is simply to just go through with it, to just go through it and try and enjoy your life in the best possible manner at that point. You don't have to beat yourself up about wasting time in self-improvement, wasting time in, in competition. There's more competition, blah, blah, blah. I just told you I, I accomplished all these things in three years. I just showed you John Anthony accomplished all of these things and possibly even beyond and had made so much more money until under the age of 30. You can always make money if you're smart enough and you don't have insatiable lust desire for money you can always be comfortable in like three years or something it's you're never gonna feel any of that stuff you're never gonna have to fear for money and have this there's only this much time left. there's only this much time left. The, ironically the only thing for there's only this much time left ironically is actually your bodybuilding or your fitness goals and your girls it's better to do girls when you're younger it's better to have uh pursue your dreams of fitness and stuff and you know try and get understand all that stuff when you're younger with your hormones and everything else um that's it and also if i do feel like possibly if this could have been avo avoided it would have been if somebody had reached out to him to look into spirituality and just go through it and it's fine to feel a little bit empty it's fine to feel a little bit lost it's fine to just sit around and just play video games it's just fine to just consume it's it's okay it doesn't you don't have to be in like this go 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 chase thing because that will never end the next thing will just never end so i feel really Hurt. I feel really disappointed I've, that we lost somebody so fucking amazing. 
Um, the last time I was kind of like, I was way more shook back then, obviously. This was just like questioning, but I was way more shook when like Z's died because I really, really, really looked up, not looked up to, I really looked at him like my brother. It was like, oh man, this fucking dude's chill. He's giving me motivation. He's giving me inspiration. I like this guy. I want this guy to be successful in life. Um, that was one of those guys. Uh, that was the last time that I really felt the loss of somebody else that I don't even know from any angle or something. I, feel, I felt the same way this way. It's really sad. Um, but hopefully it's eye opening on what is really valuable in life and what you want to be doing and where you want to be going and all that shit. And, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. If you guys have any feedback or something, if you have any other thoughts, if you know something else, write it down in the comment section below. That would be good. I can have some discussion and interaction here once again. Um, that's pretty much it. Besides that, I shall see you all next time. Peace. Dude, I entirely forgot about one of the most important key factors in the entire thing. I legitimately forgot about one of the most key factors in the entire thing. <clears throat> I don't know how I forgot this because it wasn't there. But so, you know, this didn't make me happy. This didn't make, the feelings of emptiness I got till, got till, right? The next thing actually, the next thing actually was, why did you start? That's how you want to question and get back to it. Why did you start? Did you start to create a physique that attracts 100,000 followers? Did you start to, that, is that why you started off? Did you start to have a, a physique that gets you 100 girls? Did you start to become an IFBB pro? Did you start to have 18 inch arms or 20 inch arms? Or did you start because you looked in the mirror and you weren't proud of the guy that was looking back at you and you, and you felt like you wanted to have just a little bit of a tighter stomach? You just want to have like just a little bit bigger arms. You want to have just a little bit bigger legs or something you probably didn't even care about legs back then you know most people when they start off is like i just want some arms i don't want some fat if i can get a six like that's great i want to get my belly down i want to have bigger arms if that's the reason why you started and you got there then all this the rest of it is just a toxic hedonic treadmill which is entirely pointless and you did not need and you do not want that that so always remember why you started off and then this is one of the reasons i actually mentioned i've had this um discussion with one, some of my friends before, even my clients before, is like, why haven't I run GH and insulin? I like it. I like bodybuilding. I've been doing it for 15 years. I'm going to do it for the rest of my life. As it seems like, why am I not running growth hormone, insulin, trend balloon, and garbage like that? Because I like the process of building muscle. It's if I build all of my muscle, if I build 30 fucking pounds or 50 fucking pounds in the next year, then what am I going to do after it? Because it will help me end this thing. Because I'm not going to be the guy that's going to have like a fucking huge gut and wants to end up in my man thong bikini on stage uh, for the validation of other men. I like to good, look good naked. I like to look good while I'm having sex. I like to look at my six pack. I like to look at my obliques. I like the sick aesthetic physique look. And I want to slowly add to it, slowly add to it, slowly add to it. I don't want to put on 20 pounds of muscle or something and then have a little bit of like extra gut going, hair loss going, this going. Why did you start? That's the most important thing. Don't worry about the speed. I understand why you started something. The girls thing, right? Went through all these pickup guys and this guy and 1500 girls and all that kind of shit. Why did you start? When I started off, I had this thing like, why did I start this thing? I started off because I could not talk to girls at all. I couldn't even talk to guys. I had social anxiety so bad. I couldn't, um, like I was an incel for like a long, I had like a dry spell of at least two years or something, despite having had sex before, of course, and having, grow, having had girlfriends before. And I just felt lost. I felt like I was... I felt like my life was getting over. I had the fear of loneliness. But the most important thing was it would be great to just have one girl that I can call my own and have fun with or something. It wasn't to have three. It wasn't to have all the craziest BDSM. It would be good to have really good sex. But even when you're like a, that beggar, beginner, loser, you, you don't even think about the craziest BDSM sex or some shit. You're just thinking like, just, you know, it would be great to just have some sex or something. Why did you start? That was the reason I started and I got past that way before. So... So then all of these other things are just a toxic hedonic treadmill that I didn't need to go through and I didn't need to chase. When I started making money, this is really, 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 I mentioned this before. When I first started off in the pickup, th um, sorry, in the business mastermind thing, this guy actually signed me up. There you go. This guy signed me up. <clears throat> this guy, this guy signed me up. And I, I remember taking this picture. I was like, bro, thank you for signing me up because I made four grand last month. I made three grand last month. You know, some shit like that, that money that I've never made before. And, uh, I remember, um, uh, so when he was signing me up, he was asking me, okay, what do you make right now? What's your short-term goal? 
I was making 1900 or some 1500 CAD per month. Uh, so yeah, what's your short term goal? I was like, man, if I can make five grand per month in the next three to six months, that'd be fucking insane, dude. Uh, he was like, okay, awesome. Awesome. What's going to, what's that going to help you do? What's it going to do? Um, and then he has, okay, give me a long term goal. What's your long term goal? I was like, bro, if I can make 10 grand per month, I cannot think of anything else that I would ever want more than that. So he was like, no, no, think a little bit bigger. That's cool. But think a little bit bigger. Think a little bit bigger than that. Think a little, what he wanted me to say, okay, that, that camera is dead. So I'm going to have to move to this one. Give me one second. What he wanted me to say, really, what he wanted me to say was, um, you know, tell me you want a private jet. Tell me you want a private yard because all these other guys, that's what they're doing, right? They're in the Dubai fucking, uh, a hundred floor showing you this thing. And the, the main guy was standing in front of a Bentley that he rented, by the way, he told us about that after. I was like, um, so he wanted me to go, you know, go a little bit bigger, go a little bit. And I couldn't because I didn't, I couldn't, I just couldn't go bigger because I couldn't think of the utilization of more money than that. Um, because I was living in a place that had like a $450 room rent. I could go to the gym. I could eat healthy food. I had a girlfriend uh, and enough money to date girls, uh, to play video games, to buy a graphic card or something. I could buy a new graphic card every month if I wanted to put 10 grand. I didn't need any more money than that. I could do like three, four vacations. What do you need more money than that for? So he kept on going like, you know, think a little bit bigger, think a little bit bigger, you know, something like that. And I couldn't do it. But that was his thing. He was trying to push me into like, think a little bit bigger, think a little bit bigger. What was my point there? Oh yeah. So once I started making, so these are the two, three things that I did. One, I wanted to make that five grand per month. I made that really quick within the first two months or three months. The second month, I think I made the third month, I made five grand per month. That was amazing. And then eventually I ended up making 10 grand months multiple times in a row. I remember making a story about this thing as well. I made 10 grand months, um, uh, multiple times in a row. So I wanted to prove that thing to myself. The other thing I wanted to prove was to prove to my parents, because I've always felt that my parents have thought that I'm like some, some, I don't think that they've ever had like a high opinion of me. They just think I'm like some irresponsible child or some shit. So I wanted to prove to them that, you know, I can make my own money and I can make very comfortable money. I don't, you know, you don't have to worry about me or something. When they came over, I managed to do that. I showed it to them. That was one thing that was done. That was the second thing that was done. And then my thing just stopped cold turkey stopped i could not care anymore about doing anything and i've been i've thought about that multiple different times like what was it was it something else did somebody say something to me something happened what was it and these other people in the <clears throat> seven figure mastermind there's this fucking bitch she told me oh it's because when your parents came and they didn't validate you it it didn't heal the inner child trauma in you it, it prolonged the inner child trauma in you and she and then she wanted to sell me some fucking one-on-one -on -one coaching with her to heal the inner child and trauma i was like Yes, that makes sense. But like, visit that, you know, again, she wanted to upsell me on some other fucking bullshit coaching there. <laughs> and, uh, but that's not it. The thing was I wanted, why did I start? Why did I start? Because I didn't want to remain at minimum wage. I wanted to have just enough money to do all of these things and just to enjoy my life. That's it. That's why I started. So as soon as I accomplished that, that thing was done for me. That security thing was done. The ability to make money was done. That was it. That was done for me. So your cloud thing, like how much cloud do you need? I haven't reached this, so I don't know. But my point with all of these things was, you've seen these guys that are ruining their physiques, don't live happy lives with their girlfriends or wives, people that are losing their marriages and all that kind of stuff, people that are backstabbing each other in the back. All this kind of shit is like, um, yeah, so, uh, fuck uh, this guy. Uh, I Greg Doucette is a good idea. Like why probably did he start? Probably just to make a little bit more money so he could enjoy with his wife or some shit, right? Not to have billions of dollars that he cannot, he's one man that can live in one room at one time, drive one car, you know, one, you can only do one thing. You don't need money for 10 times of that amount of thing or something. The, my, my business guru bro probably just wanted to make enough money for, to have security for his kids, not to end up eventually losing them. Uh, and all those kinds of things. That's why these guys are always chasing the uh, hedonic treadmill and they're never happy. Um, so that's your question is like, why did you start? That's the missing thing that you really want to know. So that you have, what the fuck? So that you have a, a very good clarity on why did something start and what, where do you want to keep going from there? What was the purpose of the entire thing? Um, cause then you can understand when you enjoy doing things just for the sake of doing things versus when you wanted to do something to achieve a certain something. And then that can give you like a lot more clarity. Hopefully this makes sense and it adds to the rest of the thing and uh, yeah, see you guys.